Hey, welcome to the flagship, everybody. We're back. We've been on for, uh, we've been gone for about a oh, phone call right off the bat. Uh, decline that. Welcome to the flagship show. Uh, I have been gone for two weeks on vacation, and uh, now I'm back to, uh, to entertain everybody. And my God, well, but first of all, welcome. Thanks everybody for coming uh, for coming to see us. This is the flagship show. Uh, this is a show to help people. Uh, it is like a god of old outreaching its hand to mere mortals and saying, "I am with you." We do it every week, and I'm very excited because we have a fantastic guest uh, tonight. Uh, you know him, you love him. Uh, this next guest, uh, I guess, hit his big break when he met me in the horrors of 9-11 and uh here he is america's wacky neighbor timmy williams timmy Hi, how everybody. are you oh man How's yo i've never gotten like an intro like that that's great really welcome to the flagship thank you i'm glad to finally be here yeah how, how does it feel it feel you know i feel good i feel like i'm filling with a warm light and uh you know i called in on new, uh, that other show you used to have but uh oh newsboys Newsboys, that's what it was called. Well, this is a totally Dude, I who keep is, getting what a is call. Happened? Hold on. I keep getting a call. Hold on. Who is it? It's from a Donald Reed. A D-O-N-N-E-L-L -L Reed. I keep getting a phone call from him. I don't Wait, know what you that know is. Them? Donald no, I have no idea, and I'm not gonna answer it. But um uh anyway, here we are. We okay. are we're here we are, we're having fun. This is yes. gonna be uh fantastic. Uh, I want to just wrap the bat that intro. Oh, you Good. you never seen the intro? Is it always the same one? Yeah, it's always the same intro. I don't know if you make a different one every time. So, I mean, uh, I I should make a zucchini boy one like that. Do but, you know uh, how to edit? No. Oh well, that's going to be a problem. I'll tell you right off the bat. Have you seen what shows before Zucchini Boys? It's just a white screen with like Comic Sans font that says "We'll be here soon." Oh, so so you've uh, so you've never seen the flagship? I mean, I've watched, I've come in and watched it, but I've never seen the intro. Oh, okay, you're gonna love it. You're gonna end up being a big fan. Um, well, I mean, oh, that's also, how. I... Also, I should say something. We're, this is uh, going to be the smoothest flagship ever because Nate Brown uh, is has stepped up, and and basically, I couldn't figure out how to get it working with my uh, bandwidth uh here at the house so nate is uh hosting from his server oh. so it's all all clear now Hell uh yeah. and, and nate if you're if you're listening they have a request to put the chat on screen so we can see whore town oh so yeah um so now hold on how do i turn my phone off uh you mean like off oh here we go can you just put there on the, the, i don't know uh, so this is welcome to uh, welcome to uh, the, the flagship. How Thank you feel? You. you liking I'm, it? I'm good. I'm liking it so far. How's chat doing? Chat looks great. Uh, yep. All right. Yeah, so, chat's uh, great. This is this is Trevor Country. I'm into it, man. I'm okay. Well, it's still Whore Town, but it's also Trevor Country. It, it, it's Trevor Country. Uh, it's it's all Whore Town, but there's different parts. There's different there's different avenues and different gangs, you know. Oh, I get it. Uh, so you like have an a, actual town. Uh, yeah. So this is uh, you're in, you're in you're in Trevor Country now, um, and I'm excited Not because everybody knows you from the wildly popular show Whitest Kids You Know, um, <laughs> but we've never sat down and delved into Timmy. What is right. what is going on with Timmy? And uh, so that's what this is going to be a kind of a, a look back at your life. Oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do like a good like Oprah style interview. And I actually tweeted out today um, mm -hmm. if there's any questions. And, and some people did send questions um, for you. Right. And we can get to that. And then we can get into some news. We have to do some news because there was a ton of, yeah. uh, of news over the past two weeks. Even just uh, today. So, yeah, uh, my boy McAfee got killed. <laughs> yeah, I got him. Hey, how did he? Uh, he was in jail and died. Yeah, but yeah, they Epstein him. Did they? Well, but oh yeah. You know why did they, why did they need to Epstein him? He knew everything, McAfee. I mean, he knows uh, how. I mean, he knew about like how to interrupt your typing with a with like a pop up about viruses. But he did, did he like know stuff about like uh, politicians and stuff? 
Oh yeah, he had dirt on all of them. Did he it? knows about the the pedophilic elite, oh, okay. uh, you know. And so, uh, and that's that's how you get got. Once you, know. you get over a billion dollars, you just get get an email about it. Yeah. Um, uh, so okay, let's go. In, let's go into the beginning of this, Timmy. Okay. Timmy mm -hmm. Williams, you're born. Yeah. In Waterfall, South Dakota. Yes. Yeah. And uh, in the, in the early '80s. Mm-hmm. The first uh, 80. Well, the second 80. Yeah. The second 80s. And mm -hmm. then, so uh, what was your childhood like? Um, you know, uh, pretty chill. Uh, just kind of being a kid, going to school. Uh, you know, uh, first couple of years I was in a trailer park. And then we lived in a regular house all the time after that. You lived in a trailer uh, park? Yeah, I lived in a trailer house. So I was like uh, six, probably. Like oh. first grade something like that yeah. what did what did your dad because your dad sells cars yeah he used to sell boats and atvs and then he sold moved on to vehicles yeah cars so were, were ve vehicles, vehicles more lucrative than boats and atvs well, i said vehicle but those are all vehicles he sold cars i don't know but i think the thing was when he sold the other stuff he was under someone else and then he got his own business as the auto dealership so nice. and my mom was a teacher so what did she teach well, she taught uh, mostly just like second grade and some substitute stuff. And then she just started having a bunch of children. So, okay. She was like, fuck teaching. Yeah. Let's just yeah. fuck. And how many, how many, how many uh, siblings do you have? I have five and I'm the oldest one. So you're, there's one of, you're one of six. Yeah. You've met like a few of them. Have I? Yes. Cool. Andy. Actually, right. I lived with one of your brothers for a while. What? Who did you? No, that was with? somebody else. Never mind. <laughs> you confuse me with your friend Tara, whose yeah. brother you lived with. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I can't tell if that's real or not. But anyway, it was real. Yeah. It was. Okay. It wasn't you. It was a woman named Tara's brother that I lived with. I got and you mistaken. Look, she's, she's a nice lady. I remember Tara, but I don't know if we really, if there's really that much for you to confuse us by. Well, you both have brothers, and I, I lived with one. And I remember when I lived with them, mm -hmm. I came home drunk one night, and I left my key out. Just I didn't have one. my key. I didn't have mm -hmm. my key. And in my mind, I was like, well, the only way to fix this is to kick the door in. And um, I've kicked in I've kicked in probably over 10 doors in my life. And yeah. I got to say, I'm fucking fantastic at it. Like I'm, I, I, I know how to do it. I do it first kick. It goes right open. So if you ever need a door kicked open, I'm the guy, but, um, wasn't happy about it the next morning. He was like, why is the door kicked in? I was like, oh, well, I lost my key. He's like, that doesn't... that's not, yeah. Dude, I mean, I, I, yeah, I've experienced your door kicking open. So yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I, I'm the oldest of, uh, of uh, the, the six children. So uh, uh, you like all of them or any of them? Uh, are you on good terms with all yeah, of them? Yeah, you know, we're all adults now. The youngest one is, he'll be 27 this year. So yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I think I'll, sometimes a big family, so they drift apart. Maybe we yeah. will after my folks die. But, uh, you know, so far we're all pretty, pretty tight. So. And then you're all, all your, your, your kind live to be like 100. Yeah, you know, my mom's side of the family, uh, like, you know, very, very Irish and very, very, like, dust bowl fucking, like, carve out a house in a hill, you know, kind of thing. And so, like, yeah, my mom's going to live forever. I'll probably live forever. My grandma's 95. My great-grandma's 105, you know, so. Now, um, um, so then you go to school. Mm -hmm. uh, you like school? Yeah, do we have we ever talked about my grade school? Yeah, I went no. to Catholic grade school. We've never talked, you and me. So this is that's why this is so this is that's why this is so fascinating. Right. Yeah. I mean, we've never, you know, I mean, as you said, you don't even have my phone number saved. So there's not there's yeah. still a lot to know about. I know? actually do have your phone number saved, but you know what I have it saved under? Uh, Tim Dog Willikins. <laughs> Wait, did you do that? Yeah. Or did I do that? Okay. I did that. That yeah. sounds like I, I used to Tim Dog. Wow. Tim Dog Willikins. Hey, someone in chat says, Timmy, were you an altar boy? Yes. And that can play right into what I was about to say. I went to Catholic. Oh, were Green you School. molested? No. Really? No. Did you no. know anyone that got molested? No, but I didn't I, w I didn't do it for that long. 
Should have stuck pre- with it. I was going to say our priest was really old, but I guess that didn't matter. What? Should have stuck with it. You could have. Could have got an HJ. Could have gotten a little uh, something on the side. Moved to New York with some real life experience. Do they molest? Do they molest uh, altar boys in the Midwest, or is that a oh, coastal sure elitist thing? Is that a coastal? Is that? Um... Well, I mean, there's still rich people and you know the powerful in the Midwest, and the Are Catholic there? Church is the Catholic. Ch- <laughs> the Catholic Church is the Catholic. Dude, Warren Buffett lives in the Midwest. Come on, the oh, Catholic okay. Church is the Catholic Church. You know, so right. wherever you go, right? Uh, yeah, Catholic school. So I never had a problem with the priest as an altar boy. My first grade teacher was an extremely mean nun. So. Were you an ugly child? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, well, there you know. go. Oh. I had like these 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 teeth, these big teeth I have have been that size since I was like four. So it's like, you know, I look like a fucking beaver, you know, and I had a bull cut, right? Oh, that's that's why you didn't get molested. That's if your kid's gonna be an altar boy, give him you a gotta bull have, cut. I mean, this is like what, like 1990, 1991. If your kid's gonna be an altar boy, you gotta give them that kind of like you know, 90210 kind of pompadour shit. Like that's, you know, you want to, you want people to look. <laughs> I think your parents are like putting a bowl on your head cutting. They're like, yeah, no one's going to want this thing sucking their dick. Like, you know, we can send him to altar boy school. <sighs> you seen the teeth on this thing? He's fine. We let him be an altar boy. <laughs> Dad's like, now, now rub his hands with a, with a hard sponge to make them look rough. So they're not, so his hands don't look soft. <laughs> Oh, this is awful. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, no, we can joke about it now. Enough time no. has passed. I'm sure they've stopped doing it. Yeah. Isn't that like still, <laughs> didn't they like, yeah, they're not done. <laughs> Yo, but yeah, that, that school, yeah, it was all right, you know, but it's just weird having like math, science, art, Bible. You know, I know I'm not the only person that experienced that, but it's just oh, yeah. weird to me, you know? Yeah, I, it was always weird to be flunking Bible. <laughs> that was my, because I was like, I was always like kind of banking on Bible to get my GPA up. And then I like, I fucking sucked at that too. Well, did you, so you were home, you were homeschooled-ish though, right? No. No, you went to school. Okay. Yeah. I, well, when I was on the bus, I was homeschooled. That's because, what I was thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but uh, you know, after the age of like eight, you know, I was in school. Um, and, uh, but that was, there was in Bible schools though. Like they had Bible as a class. Yeah. And uh, I remember, um like the Bible teacher like hated me. Like, uh, like he like really hated me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, he, for, like when I was leaving, uh, for college, like, you know, you have to get recommendations from your teachers as a joke. I went to him and I asked him for a recommendation and he, in all seriousness, like seriously looked me in the eye and he goes, Trevor, I can't think of a single positive thing about you. You fucking teach the good book, and you can't. Wow, so he didn't read very much of it, right? Uh, yeah, and I thought it was so funny, and I told my mom because I thought it was hilarious, and then she got mad, and then she got him in trouble, which I thought was even more hilarious. Like I was like, because I, I I don't want to be a snitch. I was just I was laughing sure. about it. I thought sure. it was funny, but also fuck that guy. Um, yeah, that's what happened and- to the main nun. Uh, kids like kind of told their parents because they. You know, the parents, you know, when your kids are little, you're like, how was school? It's like, oh, well, the teacher grabbed one kid by the wrist and dragged him down the hall screaming because he made a fart sound. (laughs) And she would do that shit to everybody. And I even pissed my pants doing a prayer because I was too afraid to ask to go to the bathroom. You know, it was kind of torturous. Uh, Oh, and she would also, uh, there was one girl, Jessica, she would always be like, Jessica's so nice. And she gave her like a toy. In, like to Jessica and the, told the rest of us we didn't get a t- toy because we were like because we were bad. Wow, that's like some you know that's like some prison camp shit you know yeah. that's some fucking psychological warfare. So yeah, I never had nuns because we weren't Catholic. Right, so that's only Catholics. So we were the only ones. Yeah, we don't nuns. do nuns. We're Protestant. Right. Yeah. Now I'm, the a, I'm a Protestant. Though. Yeah, we're Martin Luther. We're like no nuns. Was that one of his things? No nuns? No nuns. <laughs> well, because, I mean, right? Because he started, like, he's the one that kind of started the Protestant thing. Yeah. There's no nuns. So what do you think that was not, was that on his list of complaints? Well, I believe it was called the 95 Thesis or something like mm-hmm. that. Like, he nailed something to the door that said 95 Thesis. So one of them had, and it was 95 things that were like, we're not doing anymore. So they were like, <laughs> everybody had to be Catholic. And mm-hmm. then he was like, no but I still want to go to heaven. 
So like, he was like, I'm going to make a, a different thing. And so he was like, here's the thing. No nuns, uh, no molesting, um, the, uh, or at least not on the scale that, right. it, that, that you guys are doing it. Not in this building, those yeah. other buildings. Uh, and then they were like, no, although they still do communion, but they were like, uh, no Pope, don't like the right. Pope. Um, and then they were like, uh, what else did they say? They were like, no, uh, oh, we've only got 10 minutes left on this Zoom. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a short show today. All right. Bye, everybody. Uh, no, we'll just show that intro a couple more times. Yeah. No, what I'll do is I'll send you a, uh, you can just click back on it, on that email, okay. and, you, and we'll and pop baby. right back in. All right. Well, oh, we, uh, we're so going to yeah, just keep going until this one's over or what? Yeah, we'll go to this one's over. Then we'll okay. so, so uh, Trevor Country, I got to tell you, we're going to disappear in about nine minutes. But less, for less than a minute, then we're going to click on it. We'll come back in. It's going to be great. Why do we only get 10 minutes? Because uh, I didn't buy Zoom. I should buy it. Mm, what? Or Discord. Oh, we could do the Discord. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's basically – if you're just joining us, we're um, – we're getting into the uh, origins of the different theologies uh, right. with uh, Timmy Williams and, and I. Uh, welcome. This is the flagship show. Um, we are going to be reading donations, right? Yeah, I can do some. You can because I don't know how to do it. Uh, Where, yeah, I, I can do I can do it all, my baby. All right. So, so, uh, if, I, so if you do donate, we will read it. And all of if you're just joining us, uh, the, we are, we used to be the whitest kids, you know, we still are. Um, yeah. and, uh, we have a movie coming out next year, which I just saw the full animatics for fantastic, yeah. really good. Um, yeah. and all of the money goes, uh, to uh, everything you donate goes into the movie. So the, you know, we're, we're one donation. Yeah, we'll no, I got it. it. I can read it. Uh, okay, M 12 Sarge donated 20 bucks and says, Thank F word. The flagship is back. Speaking of Bible learning, I went to Sunday school once when I was 12 and we did charades. I reenacted the cubicle boss sketch and got kicked out of class. Oh, that's nice. Colon capital D, which is a, like a laughing, it's like a laughing face. Also, uh, I'll do through subs real quick. Uh, sub new subscriptions from Ted Cruz is my mom. Banab 122 critical moment X gifting some subs man eating bong. Getting How Dinosaurs, Zergo Like Turbo, Vic, Vic Vinegar, 89 all subscribing. And some of those folks resubscribing, as well as Rock Hard Dumpling, Legion Italia, Legion Italia, and Mr. Timmy Prime. So thank you, everybody. Yeah. Oh, there's more. I, I got him. I got him. Uh, Real Scary Scarecrow. Hi, guys. It's Aaron. Fat, fi, fat Fryer Funk, Trashy Samurai, and Critical Moment gifting a whole bunch of subs. And Hellcat Kuro gifting subs. They also sent me a lovely Father's Day present. Appreciate it, guys. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You give your address out? No, yeah, I get a P.O. box, man. That's what you do. But aren't you? Uh, we've talked about this before. And oh, I think I probably. Someone's going to hang out at my P.O. box, like waiting for me? Yeah. Well, aren't you worried someone's going to gun you down at the P.O. box? <laughs> Isn't that how they got Al Capone? Yeah. Tupac, somebody. That's what Tupac was doing. Once they find out that you know about the pedophilic elite, don't you think right. they're going to be waiting at your P.O. box to fucking McAfee and Epstein you? Oh, man, they're going to McAfee me right in the Epstein. You know, the uh, the Lutheran thing, uh, Martin Luther, that made me think, you know, people love to make fun of Scientology, like Mormonism stuff. And I think all, I think it's all up for grabs. We should make fun of all of it. But you know what? It's like people just make religions every once in a while anyways. You know what I mean? And like when they make out, you know, like a couple thousand years ago, people were probably making fun of the Bible as much. Well, maybe not because they're getting, no, they were, people. they were throwing them to lions. Right. Exactly. Cause they, they were, were like, this fun shit's of ridiculous. Them. They were making fun of them in maybe the meanest way to make fun of somebody <laughs> which is to throw them into a lion. <laughs> you know what? Next time someone says that we're all being too mean to each other, we'll just be like, yo, no lions. We're fine. There's no lions here. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, dude. like, well, you, uh, you know, people, when God tells them to do a religion, they do a religion. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, Ron Hubbard bets you. Right. Or no, someone you, don't, you don't believe in Scientology? Well, I don't know. I think it's. Now, uh, with, now with all the aliens, like the government today, well, I don't want to get ahead. We're still going through Timmy's life, but right. this, this perfectly set up a, a news thing. The government is like, aliens are real. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and we don't know what to do about them. Uh-huh. And uh, and that's what they and they're like, we'd like more money to figure out what to do with them. That's basically what the report said. Right. Um, someone says LMAO. That's not what they said. It is what they said. What are you talking about? So, I mean, a lot of people saying that's not what they said. Uh, yeah. It sounds to me like it's probably I mean, that sounds like something they do. The government be like, well, we, we want to do something besides war and, you know, give rich people breaks, but we need more money, you know? Yeah, like I want to catch one of these fuckers. Do you think they're grays, or what do you think they look like? I don't know, but I, I don't. Uh, I think we're being pussies about this. Do you think you we know? should just immediately do war on the aliens? Yes, <laughs> I think. I think we should. Like they're they're always like they oh we got them on we tracking like all these oh they're always in fighter jets. And then we got him on a tracker and you saw that video. He was like, I got him. I got him on the tracker. Like, look, look, I got him. We can follow him on the camera. It's like, shoot a fucking missile at it. And we'll figure out, you, you got, if you got him on the tracker, let's see what it does with a missile. Let's see if he can get away from a missile. And then we could go down, figure out what the fuck it is. And also it sends a message, which is like, y'all ain't from here. Get the right. fuck out. Yeah. I mean, but okay. But you know, you and I have some differences as far as that kind of thing goes. Like I want them to come here. I've got the dry fist and close encounters kind of style where I want to like, maybe go with them. Check, check it out. You know, Fuck them. <laughs> they got their own planet. Odds are they fucked it up, which is why they're coming here. So you're, you're an independence day guy. What do you mean? Well, that's what the aliens in independence day do. Oh, well, why else would an alien come here? It's that they want fucking water or something. So, like, the aliens fucked up wherever they are, and then they're kind of, like, coming, and it's just going to be like, you know, like when uh, the cowboys showed up to the Indians, you know, and all the Indians were here, and then they were like, well, maybe we should be nice with the cowboys first, and we'll go, and we'll, like, you know, have dinner with them. And then it, it turned out horribly for the yeah, Indians. we betrayed the like, ever-living shit out of them. Still you do. should learn, like, as soon as the cowboys were getting off the boat, it should have just been, like, soup, 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 arrows, you know? Like, so you're saying we should be treating alien life, or, we should be treating extraterrestrials the way that you wish the natives would have treated white dudes like fucking get out of here. You're going to ruin our stuff. Go back and ruin your I don't own know that stuff. I wish that because I, then I wouldn't live here and I like living here. Yeah. Oh, hold on. I'm getting summoned. I'll be right back. I just got to go turn the lights off. Welcome. Uh, Timmy is going to do something. Uh, uh, someone says, I basically agree with Trevor for the first time. Oh, good. Uh, how is that? Does anyone have any questions for Timmy? We can also take questions here. Oh, and uh, I, I'll, I'll tell I'll tell uh, Trevor Country right now. I'm very excited because uh, my uh, my still arrived, so I have a, a working still now. I ordered it last week and it showed up. Uh, so I'm going to start making uh, blackberry moonshine. Um, I've been looking at, into it. And it seems, is that legal? No, it is illegal. Um, but that's okay. Lots of things are illegal. Um, and I did never realize how dangerous it is, though. Because uh, there's something called methanol that when you make, so when you make moonshine, um, you're supposed to take the first 5% that you get and throw it away because it's filled with methanol. And methanol, if you drink 10 milligrams of it, you will just go fucking blind. Uh, it kills the optic nerves. Uh, yeah, that, someone put the head, the heart, and the tail. That's right. And But that, there's something else at the, before the head, the heart, and the ha- tail. So then you got about, you got about uh, five or six uh, jars of head. Throw that away. Then you get about 10 jars of heart. That's the good stuff. That's the moonshine that's going to be clear. Uh, it's not going to have a horrible taste to it. And then the last five you throw away too. So... I'm very worried. And uh, so if you drink 10, milli- 10 millimeters, which is about two teaspoons, two teaspoons of it, you'll just go blind. And if you uh, drink six teaspoons, you fucking die. So that's, uh, I didn't realize that. So I've got to get real good at this before I start drinking it. <laughs> what animal was that you're talking about? No, no, it's uh, my, my still came. Oh, the head, you know, you're saying the head and the tail and the heart. That's what they call it. Like when you pour, when you're, oh, yeah. Okay. I got you. Uh, so I got some. I got some friends coming over next weekend. Um, to uh, we're gonna have like a, a a moonshine party, and we're gonna be like uh, making moonshine in the back. 
my so God. it's going to be fun. Watch the Did news, everybody. Critical? Watch LA local news under like fire de- or just go to Twitter, follow the LAPD and fire department dispatch and just see what happens. Uh, you ever see uh, Mr. Pickles, the show? Mr. Pickles. On Adult no. Swim? It's a fantastic no. show. No. Um, but yeah, those uh, the, the guys who do that are my friends and they're going to come over. Oh. So we're going to do cool. a moonshine moonshine party. It says uh, less than a minute. Hey! Back. hey. A dinosaurs story. We're back. What's up? Uh, Someone said uh, this is like a real life mall bitches. <laughs> Yeah, the flagship, is, the flagship is kind of like a real life mall bitches. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh, is it? No, this is. <laughs> hey, by the way, thanks to Nate, this has never gone smoother. This, this, Timmy, you're actually witnessing the smoothest flagship that's ever been made. <laughs> well, I watched some of Jim's, and it was like kind of crazy, right? And I, I missed the one with your sister, but yeah, i yeah, that's good. Yeah, but yeah. it's all it's I mean, it took me a long time as a kitty boys. You know, one thing, you know, streaming by yourself can be difficult. There's a lot for some old farts like us to figure out, you know. I think it adds to the uh the fun and the mystique of the show. Right. It's like because like, you know, fun mysteries like what happened? Yeah. Why did, why did he do it this way? This you know? isn't one of those slick bullshit shows like Middle Ditch is doing over there. Are we gonna? Are we talking about him? Oh man! I don't know. I I keep talking about. It. I should stop. I don't know. He's like in big trouble, isn't he? No, not really. No, I think he's in like a little amount of trouble. Oh, we the guys don't get in trouble for that anymore. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna read know. some uh, donations. Okay. Uh, the dude thirty six hundred donated fifty dollars. I said always thought Trevor was a sociopathic asshole. I don't agree, but I really appreciate how he interviewed non traditional couples without any judgment. That was on your talk show, right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I have a fantastic talk show that everybody should watch. It is great. Uh, called the Trevor Moore Show. It's on Comedy Central's YouTube. We just put uh, the, the the second season up, and uh, I like it better than the first season. We had some fantastic guests. We have James Adomian, yeah. uh, Ron Funches, the always funny Blair Saki, Sam mm-hmm. Brown, uh, Sean O'Connor. The list goes on and on and on. Uh, so check it out. It's very good. I was watching a clip today of Blair talking about fucking a ghost. So it's pretty Yeah, good. we talk about ghost fucking. He's we great. talk about a whole bunch of things. And uh, no offense to you, Timmy. Timmy is stepping in as a, as a pinch hitter here. Mm-hmm. Uh, last minute. Uh, I always wanted to have, uh, I wanted to have all the whitest kids on and basically find out about their lives. I want right. to do that. And so Timmy's the first one of these I'm doing. Um, but I was trying to get Blair on. Oh. Um, and she couldn't do it because... It's, it's actually getting very hard to book comedians on Friday nights now. Because, because they're doing live shows or Zoom yep. stuff? Yep, no, it's the world is open back up. So like right. the Laugh Factory, the Comedy Store, yeah. everything's working now. So it's like it's, it's getting hard, harder to get uh, our friends who are comedians and right. uh, we're working doing stand-up on Friday night shows. But hey, man, the dude in South Dakota, he's free. Yeah. Hey, last Friday I did my first stand-up show since the pandemic. It was uh, at a zoo. So it was at a zoo. Yeah, it was at a like a wine thing. You know, they're like little booths, and you go around, taste the wine, taste the food. So no one had was sitting down; they're just kind of walking by. But you know, if you uh, were loud enough, they'd stop and watch you for a little bit. So someone asked, "Will Derek Savage ever be back?" I would love to have Derek Savage back. I have a funny, a funny kind of thing happened. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, mm-hmm. um, Derek Savage does the uh, 420 Awards in Las Vegas, uh, Nevada. Uh, and uh, I went to the first one. Uh, uh, me and a friend flew out there to just be in the audience just because we we're huge fans. And uh, so we were there. And so then he uh, so he called me at the beginning of the pandemic, and uh, which makes me very happy that uh, Derek has my number. And uh, like, it makes me, I love that. I love, I like, I like, oh, Derek Savage is calling. Awesome. Um, awesome. And so I, uh, and he wanted me, he was offering for me to like host the second 420 awards. And, uh, and this was in April, 420 like that. And I was kind of like, I don't think I can, man. Like, I think uh, there's the, you know, the virus. 
And he was kind of like, yeah, that's what other people are saying too. So I wasn't like the first choice. Like the guy, he got to me was like, nobody's, it was like April. It was like just starting the, the, the pandemic. So you're the second choice going into the pandemic. I'm the second choice coming out. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I like that. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, oh, I was reading some donations. I can go back. Uh, oh, go uh, ahead. Okay. Uh, Pete Boda donated 10 bucks. Is so grateful to Flagship is back. Thanks for the new mods. Dr. Fun MD donated 10 bucks. Love you, Trevor and Timmy. Did either of you watch Bo Burnham's new special? You're beautiful. I did not watch it yet. I've heard a lot of things. I didn't either. My sister called to talk to me about it. But yeah. I don't, I like Bo Burnham. I think Bo Burnham's great. Yeah. That said, I do not enjoy watching comedy. Dude, so I'm on board with you, babe. I mean, I never, dude, I, I don't watch like comedy movies. I don't watch stand up no. specials. I just, I don't know. I love watching that stuff live. Like if I'm doing stand up, I like to watch other people do stand up, you know, like, uh, you know, we used to watch our friends act or do, you know, perform and we would do shows and I just don't like sitting down here and watching it, you know? Yeah, I don't. Well, I mean, I saw, I saw one of the videos that he put on YouTube and I really liked it. And I love the idea of the special. Yeah. <laughs> that he's just in a room with like a like a badass 4K projector. Yeah. And that's like the whole thing. I think that's yeah. awesome. Um, and I, think I haven't watched funny. the whole thing. I like his songs, you know? Yeah. Um, but no, haven't seen it. Haven't seen it. You know what I've been watching? What's that? Uh, the Indiana Jones movies again. Oh, yeah? How's yeah. That? You know what? What? Crystal Skull's not the worst one. What are you going to say? Temple of Doom, worst worst Indiana Jones. Okay. See, I've shown my daughter recently Raiders and Last Crusade. Those are my two favorites. Uh, um, I didn't show her Temple of Doom yet just because it's like kind of the goriest one too, you know? People are mad. They're saying, you bastard, debatable, yeah. Trevor, you poser. Uh, 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 wa okay, watch them again. Here's the thing about the Crystal Skulls. Mm -hmm. If you delete the middle... 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, like, and I'm talking about the fucking waterfalls, the uh, the oh, trucks in the jungle, uh, Shia LaBeouf swinging around with the monkeys. Take that, that out. Yeah, Delete. there's a, oh, the snake parts in there too. Isn't that with the snake with the quicksand? Is that part in there? That's where it starts to get bad. Yeah. Um, but like, if you just take the story, it fits just, it's just like the other Indiana Joneses. Like, you know, I, yeah, it, it, I mean, the Indiana Joneses were silly. Temple of Doom has an incredible beginning. Yeah. Maybe the best beginning of any Indiana Jones. The Hong Kong thing. The Hong Kong thing. Short yeah. round, love short round. Yeah. Fantastic. Then when it gets to the fucking haunted mansion, <laughs> it's so stupid. Like, I, I hate it. And then, and Spielberg's wife is fucking annoying in it. Mm -hmm. Like, she's really annoying. Like, and it's hard to get past that. I, I, mm -hmm. and, and then if you watch, it just all looks so dumb. Like, and this plot is stupid. The they like, they, they stole like, a bunch of kids to like, yeah, to, to mine. To mine. It's, and there's know, lava. Why is there lava? Yeah, it's just, you know, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, because she'll want to watch these other ones soon. And I think I am going to uh, agree with you, uh, you know, that the Crystal Skull is better. And there's people calling you a poser. I, I think that's completely opposite because it's like, uh, dude, honestly, seeing you like Crystal Skull is a badass take. And it, I mean, badass in a way because it's like uh, it's, co it's contradictory to a lot of common knowledge, you know, yeah. people have a common opinion. Plus, do you remember we we're in the theater watching that when it came out in 2008? We went to like a 3 a.m. showing. And I remember you, I think you were sitting next to me. And at the part, just in the part you talk about, they should take out the stupid truck chase thing. Yep. I remember you look at me, you just go, this movie is terrible. <laughs> well, Sam and I got into a huge fight at that movie. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. That was crazy. We, we stayed up all night drinking. And mm -hmm. we went to see the movie at 3 a.m. because that was the only ticket we could get. Mm -hmm. And so we were there. And then when the monkey scene happened, I was just like, okay, let's go. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. This is irredeemable. You can't, it can't come back from this. Let's go. Let's at least yeah. get some sleep. Like, you know. Right. And then Sam's like, no, I want to watch the movie. And so then, like, then afterwards, like, I got vetoed. So I'm sitting there. And then afterwards, when we got out of the movie, I go, that was worse than Phantom Menace. Uh, and Sam got really mad. 
He was like, it was not worse than Phantom Menace. And I was like, it is. Now, I secretly like Phantom Menace. I think Phantom Menace Phantom is a Menace good movie. Isn't, I mean, especially compared to what's uh, Attack of the Clones, it's good, you know? Or this bull, no, all of their bullshit Last Jedi. We're not going to go into that. You like The Last Jedi, don't you? I do. I, I like why? The, uh, I can tell you why. And okay. uh, I, I like the... Uh, I like that. I'd like that the whole movie is about like kind of uh, messing with expectations. And I really, really liked Luke's arc in it. And I know that people are mad that he wasn't Superman, but what well, I don't, I like, don't have a problem with Luke's arc. I, I actually you think you didn't like the story. To, I, I know that you didn't like how, how I got, how they kind of did the rest of it. And I, you know, it's not perfect, but you know, but I really liked where they left it. And I was really sad that uh, rise of Skywalker didn't kind of follow through with a lot of that stuff. I was glad it didn't. Even though really? Rise of Skywalker is not great, but like, because it was like, a, I didn't like it that it was like anyone can be a Jedi. I love that. I fucking What's hate wrong that. With that. No, Why? it's special magic people. This this right. whole this whole sure. movie has been a special magic sure. family. That's sure. what it's about. You don't what? in no, the that's not of what it's nine like. be like. Actually, it's not about this family anymore. Fuck that. Yes, well, it that's, is. That's garbage, though. See, I like the idea that it's it can be anybody. That's why I, I've liked like the High Republic stuff they're doing with the uh, books and comics is because like it's not about any of that stuff. It takes place two hundred years before everything else, so they can just do whatever the fuck they want, and it's cool, you know. I, I just that's why I like the Mandalorian. I think that's why we agree on that. It's because it's not beholden to Luke stuff. You that's know? fine. Yeah. Just do all that. Do all do all that in that movie in, in those okay. stuff. But this is this is the Skywalker saga. We have spent 40 years following a family. <laughs> uh-huh. we're, the, we're at the penultimate movie, the one before the end, and then they're like, wait a minute, this family's not special at all. This chick is. Right. You know? <laughs> they're still in it i don't know um I, I i just thought it was an opportunity for them to kind of do something different and then they didn't do it so i don't know but whatever i mean that's so, uh so it says this is a great interview about timmy's life well honestly though i mean talking about star wars is a large portion <laughs> of my life also also here's another thing about the last jedi since okay. you love it so much oh god all right um uh, <laughs> you don't like the casino planet I hate the casino planet. And here's the thing. I don't, I don't like, like I don't like people. I don't like that people were mad to the lady who played Rose. Right. Like, I think that's fucked up. I yeah, don't like sure. it when they were mad. To, I don't I like it when they were mean to Jake Lloyd, little, little Darth Vader. Right. Yeah, I don't yeah. like it when they were mean to Jar Jar. It's none of these people's fault. Right. You know, they have shitty characters. Sure. But yeah. Like, but I'm not going to pretend that Rose is a good character. Yeah. It's just kind of like, she's just kind of there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh and, and then like you had you had Finn who's a stormtrooper and then maybe he's becoming a Jedi. It's and they interesting. Him. Yeah. And then they're like go go fucking, you know, run around with Rose yeah. and just have these like bullshit third grader uh, theolo- uh philosophical philo- philosophical questions where it's like, "Whoa, you know, both sides are kind of bad in war." Wow, yeah, that's think, fucking interesting. Do you guys think war is bad? Yeah. Um yeah, uh, that's the thing. Well, that's the problem with the entire new trilogy is that there wasn't one fucking weirdo guiding mind. And so yeah. it was a fucking committee. It was a story by committee, uh, as Queen Amidala would say it. And uh, that's the problem. It's like, well, I ha- I, my, I make this much money a year and I think this idea should happen. And so then the next person I was like, I make this much money. And so my idea should be, a, you know, that's what happened. You know? I would have loved if it was a committee. I don't think it was that. I think it was like basically they got there and they're like, all right, J.J. Abrams do something. And he did. And then for huh? some reason he just said, all right, whoever's next, do whatever. No one talked. No one planned well, anything. That's kind of what I mean is that nobody yeah. had a plan. They were all just saying the same, you know, whatever they want to do. And that's kind of what Rise of Skywalker felt like. I think they got a new tack going. Uh, you know, Mando's awesome. Um, the Bad Batch is fucking great. I don't know if you ever watched the animation stuff, but Bad Batch is like really great and uh, loving it. Uh, I have so a hard I, time I think, watching the cartoons. Huh? I have a hard time watching the cartoons. Do you like that? Is it the animation style? I have a hard time just watching cartoons. I try, except uh, yeah. our cartoon that comes out next year, which is fantastic. Oh my God, I just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you better turn that boat around real fast. I hate buddy. cartoons. <laughs> I only like cartoons if some of the drawings sort of look like me. <laughs> yeah. I like cartoons oh, that I'm in. I like most things that I'm in. 
I know. I don't watch comedies, but the stuff I'm in, it's great. Uh, I, I never was a big animation guy either. Uh, but I um, I don't know. I've, I've gotten into the Clone Wars stuff. My daughter and I have watched all of it throughout her whole life. You know what's interesting? Tying life into Star Wars, which I do a lot anyways, is so she came to, okay, Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith is pretty bad. And it has that famous bad thing with Darth Vader. When Anakin becomes Darth Vader, he goes, no, you know, and it's like the yeah. whole Frankenstein moment. Not the so bad. My daughter and I watched Phantom Menace and then uh, Attack of the Clones and then watched the whole, all the show, the Clone Wars show, which basically right. ends where Revenge of the Sith begins. Right. And, uh, and so she was actually like emotionally invested in the characters. It's kind of weird to watch because yeah. – we weren't we didn't give a shit about anakin i mean he you know and but then no matter so she was like sad when says, is the rest of the stream going to be about star wars it now might be. <laughs> just buckle in motherfuckers no 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 guys? we're we're going to get to the marvel cinematic universe in a second oh god no that's not as big a deal to me although i enjoy it but uh, are you watching the four loco uh thing yeah i love four loco <laughs> yeah have you watched it yeah yeah it's good it's kind of boring it's inter it's weird it's different I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I thought Winter Soldier was boring too, and then the back half of it kicked ass. So. Oh yeah, that was boring too. W Winter Soldier is boring. Yeah, but episode five and six were real good. So, anyways, uh, stop talking shit on Disney stuff. <laughs> you're, gonna get, you're gonna get visited in the night. <laughs> I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get McAfee. Yeah, you're gonna get crystal knocked by the Disney. Um, that's probably rude. I'm sorry. Anyways, uh, no. So my daughter, you know, she's more emotionally invested in characters. And Revenge of the Sith comes to an end, and Darth Vader gets out of that thing, goes, no. And I look over at her. She's like six. She goes, <laughs> so I was like, it doesn't matter. That scene's always going to be fucking yeah. stupid. You know? Does she laugh like that? Yeah, she's like, <laughs> <laughs> she, has, she has a Jabba laugh. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, I'd probably show her too much Star Wars. No, but you know, and, and that's a Star Wars is a fun thing to share with kids too, because it's like, you know, it's been going on for long enough. So yeah, my kid loves it. Yeah? Yeah. What do you watch? You just you watch all the stuff. Lego you Star Wars. Yeah. He watches all the Lego Star Wars because I, oh, sure. I won't let him watch the regular ones because they're kind of scary. Yeah. Um, I'll let him watch the pod race and I'll let him watch the speeder bike race. He's and, not even four yet, right? No, he's, he's a little guy, but he's huge. <laughs> um, and uh, But he loves Darth Vader. He loves like the Lego things. So then I took him to Disneyland last week uh -huh. um, and I was like, oh, this will be great. You'll get to see all Star Wars and it will be real and everything yeah. like that. Uh, cause he got into star Wars during the pandemic. Sure. So he's like, never been, never been at Disneyland or anything like that. So we go and, uh, fucking Disney doesn't have Darth Vader there. Wait, wait, do they have like Kylo Ren and stuff? Yeah. It's like Kylo Ren and, and Ray and, and Rose walking around and no. it's like, no, it's not Rose. Rose. No, but it's Ray. And it's like, and then, and my and my kid doesn't give a shit about Ray, like you know, like it's so like it's like they're trying they're trying so hard for these characters to take mm -hmm. off, but still the things that they're making for kids, which are the people who are excited to go to Disneyland, it's still the original characters. It's the the Legos aren't using Kylo Ren, right? The Legos are still Darth Vader because I mean. I mean, here's the thing. It's the same reason I like comic books. It's modern mythology, right? So, like, Darth Vader's like a fucking Loki or Odin. I'm not talking about Loki from Marvel. I'm talking about, like, you know, like, these are, like, characters that, like, have been around for long enough that people can, you know, adapt and keep show sharing them with their families through generations, you know? So Yeah. Just, I don't know. But, I'm not, look, I'm not anti-Ray. Have Ray there. That's fine. Sure. But, but why, why not, not have Darth? No, I think you're totally right. It is bananas. It's like if Disney World was like, we didn't have Mickey Mouse, but we had his, uh, his, uh, you know, hetero, a uh, non-heteronormative, uh, you know, uh, pansexual, like, you know, uh, 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 non-binary nephew, whatever. Uh, well, Michael, Timmy, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to disparage. I don't want to get I'm into I'm not trying that. to disparage. I'm saying that they try. You no, know, I'm giving you, I'm, I'm joking. I know. But what they do is they try, you know, they, they I think it is important to make things for the new generation. And so that's why I said all those silly, all those things, uh, because, you know, obviously like, you know, trying to make new characters that make more people feel included. That's all great. 
Yeah. Well, keep the old, like you can keep the old ones around. Like you're not going to have Darth Vader. Are you kidding me? What are no, you I know. Next? He's the most iconic villain besides maybe Dracula. D and you dude. bought the IP and you made a Star Wars world. Put, put a kid in a Darth Vader outfit. Make him walk around and wave at people. Actually, yeah. It's like, dude, you, 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 like, hey, Disney buys Marvel and Star Wars so they can print money. And you're not going to fucking buy their George Washington, like use their George Washington. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like. There's nothing what you're right. I mean, it's like Kermit the Frog, Mickey Mouse, Darth Vader. They're all right up there. Yeah. And one company owns all of them. Anyway. Kylo. I love my kid does like Kylo Ren. I mean, he just likes, he just likes bad guys. Sure. Well, you yeah. should. I mean, they're cool. Margaret and I were just talking about, well, there's a great villain from a bounty hunter from the cartoons that maybe they'll do in real life. He's a blue guy. Oh, I forgot his name. Someone, the blue cowboy guy. Anyways, he's great. Oh, an avatar. Is it an avatar? No, it's not an avatar. He's got the red eyes, but Cad Bane. Thank you, Liam Lyre. Uh, Do they have avatars in Star Wars? Probably. Because, well, like, since they're both owned by Disney now. They should. They should just have, like, uh, one of the movies they drive by the Avatar planet. And all, like, yeah. And they wave at the ship. Star like, Wars. Hey, what's up? We're having sex with our hair or whatever the avatars do. Star Wars 10. Luke comes back and, and, and Vader does <laughs> too. And they team up and they go to town on a bunch of avatars. They just, they team up with the humans from Avatar and just fucking like steamroll the whole fucking planet. Kill that whole fucking annoying hippie Stop species. down all their fucking trees. <laughs> your fucking, your magic trees. <laughs> fucking hippies. Dude, the home tree. <laughs> the home tree. I know a guy who designed a shirt that had like an Avatar that looked like Jesus and it said, Jesus is my home tree. <laughs> What? It doesn't make sense, but it's like, funny. Oh, is it because of the, it's, he's making an avatar? Yeah, right? but you know, Jesus is my homeboy was the, yeah, yeah. yeah, so Jesus is my home turn. Um, what do you want to talk about now? So you go to school. Wait, we're still at like me being like 10. Yeah, we're going through your life. School. So you go to school. Mm -hmm. uh, who are your friends in school? Greg. Greg? What's Jesse. Greg do now? I haven't talked to anybody. I think Jesse lives in Idaho. Trent. I don't know where Greg or Trent are. Scotty, RIP. Uh, Kyle. What? Kyle? It's weird. Okay. So, like, you know, you have your grade school friends. You know, you drift apart from those people when you hit middle school. But I still hang out with my grade school friends. Do you? Like, yeah. who? <laughs> like, Kyle, Kyle, you have a Kyle. Kyle, Matt, James, like okay. I still, I still, I, I, I still in contact with all my. So some of them, some of them I know. One of them died. Some of them I know. But so the one that I wasn't super close with, Kyle, he and I are the ones that became friends later on. Maybe because he was a manager in the movie theater. But uh, you know, <laughs> like we became buddies. But yeah, you know, so I had friends there, and uh, um, you know, friends with most of the girls. We didn't have a big class. Some of them I still am friends with. But uh, yeah, you know, when I went to middle school, I kind of got a whole new crew and I'm still friends with those guys, you know, like Casey, you know, Casey, mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, so those guys I met when I was like 12, seventh grade, you know, that was I like, this, the, I think this is a dead end. Talking about making friends. Yeah. I'm going to back up. I'm going to, I'm going to do another thing. Is that, that's not rude. Is it? I don't know. What do you want to no, do? I don't think it's rude. No. Um, so you then, don't want to talk about it. You just don't want to just name a bunch of friends that no one knows. Yeah, exactly. I'm just trying to be a good host, and I'm thinking about Trevor Country. Yeah. Okay. So at, at a certain there? point, we're just yeah, we're just saying names. Yeah. Um, so then, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Timmy, how many people do you think you've met, and can you list them all? <laughs> oh, there's Kyle. There's Kyle. There's yeah. Kyle. Someone says back to talking about Star Wars. No, uh, you don't want that. Um, well, I did make, you know, the, the friends that I hung on to through my life have generally been, you know, Star Wars often comes up people, someone just saying, I, I feel like Trevor and Timmy connected on Star Wars. We did. But that's not the first stupid pop culture thing we talked about. Do you remember what it was? No, you, I, I you know, movie I, face that, off? Uh, that was probably close, but so, you know, we met on nine 11. We all know the story. Uh, we didn't really talk about much that night because we were all drinking stuff and 9-11 just happened. So if we were talking, it was probably about that. Yeah, we uh, talked a lot about 9-11 that night. I remember that. I yeah. remember we're all drinking and every nobody would shut up about 9-11. It's like, oh, I get it. Ah, Guys, that was this morning. Can we fucking talk yeah. about Star Wars, please? It's been 13 hours. We get it. Um <laughs> But no, so I ran into you guys. I met you guys that night. Then like a night or two or a day or two later, like in the afternoon, 
I was going out to, I bought stuff to like donate for the rescue workers, like clean t-shirts, Snickers bars, water, stuff like that. And I ran into you and Sam. I think you guys had donated blood because everybody was doing stuff. No, like we, we, uh, we, yeah, we were like, we'll go donate blood. And then we went in and they were like, we have too much blood. And they turned us down and we were kind of like, good. I don't really want to donate. Yeah. Blood. They were probably like, yeah, we don't want your blood either. They're like, we showed up drunk and they're like, hey, eh, we're good on blood. We're, we're trying to get blood to rescue to, you know, people that need it. They don't want to get drunk right away. So, anyways, the three of us went to McDonald's and we were talking. And I just remember that we were talking about how when we were kids, like 10, 11 years old, that the ending of Turtles 2, Ninja Turtles 2, is like a huge pop culture moment because you 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 love the turtles and they're yeah. fighting the bad guys. They break through a wall and there's fucking vanilla ice. Yeah. You know? And, and back like, then it wasn't stuff that wasn't like spoilers because there was no internet. Right. So it's not like you knew that Vanilla Ice was going to be in the Turtles movie. You're just psyched right. for a Turtles movie. And then yeah. all of a sudden the wall breaks down and then it's Ice Ice Baby. And you're like, oh. and, and this was like the month that Vanilla Ice was yeah. cool. Yeah. Like he hit it right on the thing because he quickly became not cool. But yeah. it was at that moment he went through the wall and you're just like, the gods made a movie. Oh, they know exactly what we wanted. It's funny to talk about him being cool for a month because – I'm sure that mo movie came out in the summer, right? So that came out. Vanilla Ice is in Turtles. The next month, August, he played the South Dakota State Fair. <laughs> Did you go? He was already doing state fairs like a month later. Wow. But that's a downward spiral performance, right? Yeah. State fair? You go from the Turtles to a state fair in one summer? Yeah, that's not that's great. In like three weeks. Yeah. The, on, uh, Vanilla. So you decide, you, you, you reach the age of... Uh, uh, college. Oh, you skipped right over my ska band, but yeah, we can. Oh no, no, no. Let's go back. So, <laughs> so ska band. Yeah. So Timmy, yeah. A, a, a newly pubescent Timmy mm. struggling with, uh, okay. I wasn't going to go there, but sure. A lot of, lot of, did lot you, of uh, did you jerk off a lot as a kid? Sure. Ow. In a house with a, in a trailer with six siblings. A trailer. No, we were in a, I had a, I had a basement corner room by that. Oh, that's good jerking. I, <laughs> I had a boombox. Oh, so, dude, a basement the corner. Thing, the first thing I jerked off to was Salt and Pepper, just like one of their songs on Very Necessary. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, well, there was some song where they're being real horny, you know, because they had the radio play stuff, but then they had some like horny stuff. I don't remember much about them, but they were a very horny group, right? Yeah, they're great. And uh, and TLC was super horny when they came out. Anyway, so I don't know. That was that was I, I loved it. Yeah. All music was a bunch of horn balls back then. Yeah, Although dude. it is now, too. Yeah, but it's, they're like trying to be cooler about it. Like, especially like some of that earlier hip hop stuff, they're just like, we like asses, we like fucking. And so here's an ass and people fucking on the album cover, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they were just yeah. right up yeah. about it. Someone says music is way horny right now. It is. I listen to like top like 20 stuff a lot, and it's all fucking hornballs. Especially the new wave of lady rappers are super horny, right? Yeah. They're, uh, Super thirsty time in music. Megan, <laughs> thirsty. Megan the Stallion, right? Who else we got? Is Megan Lizzo still big deal? Very horny. Right, she's horny. Is Lizzo horny? I don't know Lizzo. Uh, Lizzo, okay. She was like a cool. I know girl. who she is, but I don't know her songs. I don't know her stuff much. Uh, who's uh, the other? Cardi B. Cardi B. Right? Very right. horny. She's super horny. Doja Cat. Yes, she's Doja horny. Cat. Super hornball. What? <laughs> Which Spice Girl did you jack it to? Someone asked. Well, I mean, Hosh. Not me. What? I was into ginger and scary. I don't know. Gross. Ginger? I don't know. Ginger Come gross. On. Mm. Posh? Yeah, posh. posh was... always looked a little too skinny. It looked like she turned down a sandwich. No such thing. Oh, <laughs> 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 um, yeah. man. Look, if you're going to come to Subway with me and order a salad, you know, I'm not interested. <laughs> Uh, so anyways, yeah, I was in high school and uh, well, scary's okay, scary's okay. Ginger's yeah. the one that I reacted to. I get it, you know. Yeah. yeah, well, that's the thing is like, you know, the Spice Girls kind of were the spectrum for you know, yeah. Who's the one that nobody everyone forgot about? Baby, no, sporty. Never knew baby, sporty. Sporty. people forget about sporty. <laughs> So do you think that's good? Do you think now Sporty Spice is allowed to just live her life however she yeah. wants because no one remembers her? 
Yeah. She still has probably a fucking lot of money. I'm sure they made a lot of money. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it was a long time ago. Posh has right. a lot of money because she married David Beckham. Right. Also, they're probably managed just like uh, our American boy bands are managed, and those guys got the money. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like where's Lance Bass? Well, wait, he went to space, right? Plus they're all like they're all British. So like their money is not like not worth like half of ours or something like that. Well, maybe it's back like, then. It's like toy money. Um or, or isn't isn't their money better than our money now? Probably. Who knows? No way to bought, no way to find out. I bought some Blu-rays from Britain and I think, yeah, like I think a pound was like a buck forty. So yeah. Uh so you go to college. No, you don't. You go, you, you go, you make a ska band. You're it's in the middle of the Spice Girls. You're jerking off in the corner to ginger spice. Salt and pepper and ginger Salt and spice. pepper and ginger spice. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. you decide I need to do ska music. I was already kind of getting into it, and that was the summer that was huge. 97. And what is ska an abbreviation for? That's not. It's not? No, that's the word. It's, it's I, thought it, I thought it was going to be scoffle. <laughs> I, I wrote that during the week. Oh, dude. No. Yeah. <laughs> Give your team a raise. On Wednesday, I was like, ooh, I'll get them with that. Give your writer's team a writer's room a raise. Uh, no, uh, no, it's really just a word. It, it's it's it, it's just a rhythm, and it was a rhythm that uh, was developed around the same time as reggae, too. Within, within that thing but it's really just kind of the interplay between the, the way you strum the guitar and the drum and so that begat a bunch of stylistic things that now people think of in ska which is like hawaiian shirt you know uh is hawaiian shirts because i wear a lot of hawaiian shirts. shirts i didn't realize that i was well uh, you know real big fish you know weren't they all hawaiian sh- see that's the thing is i didn't actually get into all the like the kind of sky that people make fun of like that's not what i listened to i didn't listen to boss tones i didn't listen to real big fish i listened to like weird midwestern shit that was mixing ska with like polka and metal and you know stuff like that so the, uh, I don't know. did you listen to the squirrel nut zippers yeah now they weren't ska though. They were uh they were more of that like they were I think they were their own thing, squirrel nut zippers, but there was also the sillier thing, even sillier than ska was the swing revival at the same time. Remember that? Cherry pop and daddies. Yeah, they were dorks. Oh man. My mom bought me a squirrel nut zippers album for Christmas once. And she was like, and I was like, I opened it, I was like, what? And she was like, I saw it on the Today Show. And I was like, well, this is garbage. Like, you know, like yeah. there's no way this is going to be good. Hey, my you mom were getting to like Nirvana. And what else were you into then? All really rock. obscure shit like Nirvana. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The most popular band of the day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I really bucked the trend. And uh, in the 90s, I was into Nirvana. <laughs> maybe, maybe some STP if I felt dangerous. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, but yeah, I was just asked, I was in concert band, like regular band nerd band and a uh, guy in the percussion, uh, one of the drummers in band was like, Hey, I'm starting a ska band. We need a horn player. And I was like the only, ho- like I was probably, and I'm still friends with some of the people I played saxophone with in concert band, but I was like the least nerdy saxophone player. I was the one who probably looked like he did like listen to punk and stuff a little bit, you know? Okay. So that's why they asked me. Do you have the tongue ring yet? No, this is way before that. Well, Tongering was college. So. Okay. <laughs> Tongering. Yeah, so I, so we were in a Scott band, and, you know, it was fun. And I wrote the horn parts, and so I feel like that was, uh, you know, an experience in, like, playing shows and stuff. And uh, we recorded an album, and, you know, people are talking about it in chat because, like, uh, someone on our Reddit put up the YouTube. Uh, there's a YouTube video that's really just the audio of our whole album. So, so did you t- – I mean, not – I mean, not tour, but you went around and you did shows. We played shows mostly in Watertown. We played like uh, one or two in Minnesota, but mostly in Watertown. Here's the thing. So there wasn't a lot going on pre-internet, right? I mean, there was internet, but it wasn't the same. And uh, so like once a month or once every two months, us and the couple other bands in town would run out. um, There's a venue under a hotel here called The Boiler Room, and we would do – we'd rent out the boiler room with our own money and our friends bands. And so three or four bands would play and it would be fucking packed. There'd be like 300 kids there. And if you made merch, you sold it all. And all the bands had a great time. And like, it was great. That's how we funded. And then we got to go to Minneapolis to a real recording studio, studio that recorded real indie rock and punk bands and make our album. Cause we just made money off these shows. And uh, yeah. That's you know? cool. 
Now, did uh, I mean it's not cool, but I mean, yeah. Uh, like. oh, that is, I mean, honestly, though, it is cool because, like, no, it is. We're, we're giving all these people who are, you know, surrounded by nothing in the Midwest something more interesting to do, you know? Yeah. It and we brought you the- in bands, Whitest Kids, and, or Whitest Kids, we're Whitest Kids, uh, Jeff Coates and some of our group, uh, you know, other friends' groups. We brought in bands that were like, that these kids were listening to, you know, uh, Emory through 30. And we brought in pot shots and some other like Asian man records bands, you know, that was a big Scott label. So, you know, we, we kind of helped uh, give kids here, like something to go to besides church. Cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now did the, did like, uh, did the Jeff Coates, did you like have fans that sure. would like, that's awesome. Yeah. When my brothers were in high school later, after I was already in New York, they'd be like, there's still kids wearing Jeff Coates t-shirts, you know? So did you ever get like laid from it? No, no, no. Did anyone in the Jeff Coates get laid from it? Well, one of us was already in get laid. Huh? Do ska bands get laid? Sure. I mean, the thing is, is like, you know, some of our dudes were like pretty handsome. Uh, One of them was already a dad then he's only our age, but he already had a child and uh, he get laid. Well, apparently, (laughs) <laughs> oh, I mean, after the child. Oh, probably. Yeah. yeah did he, I think did some he of the cheat dudes... on his lady? No, oh, I don't know. I don't think okay. so. But anyways, uh, some of the dudes, uh, I think, got girls from that. But that was way before I didn't. I would, like, go do the show, hang out for a bit, and, like, my mom would pick me up. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't drinking. I wasn't Oh, doing... what a cock block. <laughs> I wasn't even interested, man. I was so, like, I don't know, like. I don't know. I was still very pupil, you know, just didn't, uh, as in a pupa, I just didn't, uh, wasn't into, I didn't want to do any of that shit. I I just like, I was in it for the music. (laughs) Nice. Like not tonight, ladies. Yeah. Sorry, ladies. I got got more horn parts to write. (laughs) Yeah. I got to go home, write the next do, 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 (laughs) do. That's New York one. What? That's New York one. You just did New York one. Did I? Yeah, I fucking love that channel. Uh, oh, by the way, we have three minutes left before this Zoom dies. <laughs> oh my god! So, so I'll have to send another one. Uh, what does it cost? Shouldn't one of us just put down a credit card and pay twenty bucks or whatever it is? Yeah, I should, but I'll forget about it. I'll like forget it hour. too. Um, <laughs> the other thing is, uh, so there's a Patreon, a Whitest Kids yes. Patreon. You can go to the Patreon at patreon.whitestkids.com. Um, and uh, I don't know if that's what it is, but it, there's something. Oh, it's, you... it's Patreon slash WKUK official. Yeah. Patreon.com slash WKUK official. Yes. So you can go there. And uh, we just taped a new episode of Buckerson and Myers, which should really? be going up there pretty soon. Mm-hmm. And you got real mad at me. What did I get mad at you for? At the beginning, you got mad at me. Because you were, because I didn't like that you had done so much before. I don't know. I don't know what it was. I, did I get mad at you because I felt like you had broken the game? I know I said that. Yeah, before. it was something like that. Uh, oh, listen, man, I had a bad day and, you know, I wasn't really that mad. And I think where we ended was good. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a good episode. Mm-hmm. But uh, you check it out. You see Timmy get mad at me. Uh, oh, is it going to be in there? I suppose it will be. That's the thing about Patreon. Patreon. The Patreon yeah, but, but there's also um, a part, one of the levels in the Patreon is uh, is that you get to choose – one of our shows to come on and get like two minutes or five minutes of time. Yes. And um, so there's a bunch of people who wanted to come on this show. Oh, Uh-oh. so and Sam called me right before I went on. He was like, are you going to bring people on tonight? And I'd forgotten about it. So I haven't contacted anybody, but I could send an email out to one of them and see if they want to come in. Um, that might be a good sure. thing. Or I could do them all next week. Yeah, do whatever you want, man. I, I'm all, I'm down for talking to people or, uh, you yeah. know. Do a random one? Okay. Uh, I'm going to do a random one. Um, so, Timmy. Okay. Hey, Nate, do you just want to pick one? Wow. Oh. But I got I to gotta talk to the people. I got to talk to Trevor Country. But I don't know. Like, do you have the email of all the people that need to come in? There's a uh, uh, Nick might know, but uh, we can see here. I, I don't think like I can go through my email while I'm doing the show because it'll you be might need to, You might need to do this next time. Although I would love to talk to, I, you know, I got to do that for Zucchini Boys too. I got, there's a few that want to do Zucchini Boys. 
Uh, Trevor, uh, 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 there's less than a minute on this Zoom, so we're going to go away again for a second, watch the intro, and then we'll be back on. And we're going to figure this out. We're going to talk to uh, somebody from the Patreon. And then we got to get, we just got into the ska band stuff. Now we got to get into Timmy going to college. There's so yeah. much more left on the show. Someone Don't said it's an hour and a half and Timmy hasn't moved to New York yet. Yeah, he hasn't moved to New York. That's a huge deal. We got to talk about that. Also, we got to talk, Conan O'Brien is done. Conan O'Brien. Yeah, we should. What's up? Hi. We're back. We're back. What, uh, should we explain why we keep going in and out? Do they know? The Zoom. So the Zoom, uh, every 40 minutes, the Zoom breaks. It's not, well, it's because there's it a lot of bugs using, in it. This cars are using the free version. Yeah. But you know what, man? You know, uh, we could skip ahead of my life story a little bit. Be, you know, when when I met hold on, you, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, what, you're doing ask, something else. I'm sorry. I'll ask the questions. Thank you I very know, much. I know, but I wanted to talk about free stuff for a second. But oh, okay. Ahead. Well, I'm going to send an email to a guy named Big Stinky Nut Knockers, um, who asked, <laughs> who's a Patreon user, who is asked to be in. <sighs> Did it work? I, I, I don't, just, I don't know. There's a certain screen name that just <laughs> it lands. You know? uh, so we'll see. We'll see. Big stinky nut knockers. Don't let us down. I was talking about free stuff because when you and I met, I mean, one of the linchpins of our early relationship was free shit or like scamming shit, you know, like collecting cans to turn in for money to buy cheap smokes and rice. Oh yeah, you were my poor friend. You and I were the poorest. We're so here's so the so poor. Here's I the can't th believe we fucking managed it those first couple of years. You know? Here's the thing that they don't tell you is that everybody that you see on television, like comedians and like uh, like just anybody, mm -hmm. like very wealthy parents. Fucking loaded. Everybody's Whoa. like super yeah. rich. So uh, and so like you go to in New York, everybody's super rich. And so then you're like, you know, and so we all had to get jobs. Um, but but you and I had no money. So what we had to do is uh, uh, we would recycle cans um, every day and we would get a bag of rice that we would cook in a little crock pot we had or a little mm -hmm. rice cooker. Yeah. Uh, we, we would get we would each get a six pack of Natty Lights because that was the cheapest beer. It was like 35 cents a can. Oh, um, oh. And then we would get a pack of Parliament lights that we would split. Yeah, or basics, I think. Basics sometimes. Yeah, so that was that was uh, what we did for a long time to kind of uh, to make ends meet. And mm -hmm. um, Well, to make ends meet is a stretch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to like push the ends slightly towards each other. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and we would go to art galleries on sundays because they had free wine there so we'd get drunk at art galleries and then um and then we just go to keg parties you know i did just yeah. sc scumbag it and as far as food you know uh mcdonald's dollar menu was always when you and i lived together in brooklyn we lived right around the corner from one yeah and, well, we, uh, we, when we were looking for a place we we're like it has to be close to a mcdonald's or else we'll starve to death. That's the only thing that we can afford to eat. <laughs> yeah. Besides we, rice. Literally, <laughs> if we have to take a subway train to a McDonald's, we'll die. <laughs> there was a summer when it was McDonald's like 50th anniversary or something. <laughs> and they had a special where they're like, we're going back to 1950s prices. Oh, and so man. it was like hamburgers on Tuesdays were 29 cents. And on Sundays, cheeseburgers were 39 cents. And what I would do, they didn't have a limit on how many hamburgers you could buy. Oh, no, so no. I would buy like scores of hamburgers and I would put them in a little college freezer. And for the rest of the week until like, so from Tuesday to Sunday, I would just be eating hamburgers. <laughs> and then Sunday would come and I'd get a bunch of cheeseburgers and I'd just be eating those. And uh, yeah. So that, that, that also bonded us as friends because we were, we were like the poorest of now none of the whitest kids were that like we're, i mean we're not as i mean everyone could go to college so i shouldn't say it, it's not like uh poverty like we were able to go to college but like i was not my you know, there was a thing where it's like some kids got to go to college and then they got money on top of that from their parents mm -hmm. to like buy things 
And that's what we didn't really get. Yes. So like we had, a, uh, and, and we couldn't get jobs because um, we were um, alcoholic. We well, uh, were going to school. I were at, theoretically. I worked at Subway sandwiches. Yeah. yeah. That's right. You did. Yeah. I was, I did ice cream. I did theater ushering. Uh, that's how I met Art Garfunkel, who's a prick. Uh, I did a, <laughs> well, and then, yeah, I had that like customer service uh, st- uh, mutual funds thing for a while. So, which was, it sounds a wealthy, wealthy job, but no, it was like customer service for mutual funds. So it was just, you, like, you worked at an ice cream shop, which has my favorite story, which evidently isn't true. No, it was one of those things where you and Zach jumped on the fun details and turned it into a script. Uh, <laughs> which is fine. But it is my I got greatest diarrhea story. From it is one of my ice favorite stories. Like when people are talking about like uh, when people who haven't met you and I talk about like, you know, the troop or something, they'll be like, oh, who's Timmy? I'm like, oh, Timmy's a great guy. One time he got a job at an ice cream parlor and the first day he ate so much ice cream that he shit his pants and they fired him. <laughs> so untrue. they fired me for not going and i think i for and it, i was there for like a month or a couple of weeks oh. uh they fired me for not going and, and you know what it's funny i lied and said i was sick so i could skip work and go to an art gallery with free drinks ah. and they called me on the walk there and said you're fired and i was like all right well now i need even more free Coors light you know at one of those art galleries I got super drunk and Sam and I would play a game, which was a very fun game. Um, it was kind of like Impractical Jokers before Impractical Jokers, where we would pick a girl and we'd like pick like a super hot girl at like art galleries and so that. And then I would pick the pickup line that Sam has to use and you had to use it. Nice. And, but it was this weird escalating game because then you knew you were next. And so like, uh, it was really fun anyway, but so we used to do play that at art galleries a lot. And then we got, uh, super drunk and then I fell into someone had made an art, uh, piece that was all straws that had been glued together. And it made this like really beautiful, like spiraling. It was, it was huge. And it was like, it took a lot of time and I got drunk and I fell into it and the whole thing broke and fell apart everywhere. And uh, Sean Lennon was there, and he was upset at me. Wait. That's the end of that story. What? One of John Lennon's kids. Yeah, John John and Yoko's kid was there. Jesus. Now, uh, talking about getting drunk and making a mess, have have we told the Toys R Us story? I feel like I've told it on one of my streams, but I don't know. That's definitely from me. for it? Huh? Someone said, did you pay for it? I'm like, no. Have you listened to anything I've been saying? Dude, dude we've been, I'm collecting the last 50 we've been talking about p- not paying for things. I quit. A, I got fired from a job so I could not pay for things. Yeah, I, I think I literally ran out of the out of the thing. Like I f- Fred Flintstone did. Like I jumped in the air, my feet went, and then I just like took off. <laughs> the circle. Of the- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Those, you know, I mean. Those are the times and like, you know, you only kind of remember them anyways because we were drunk and now we're old. But uh, those are like, those are some for that's some formative shit there, you know? It's something. It's something. I mean, because we had, I mean, you and I and Ivan getting drunk in the summer and ending up at Frank's fucking loft in New oh, yeah. Jersey. We ended, up at, we ended up at a drug dealer's uh, loft. He, uh, he was like going through the list of drug dealer stereotypes and just furnishing his apartment. Yeah, it was, uh, he was a friend of mine. He's a good friend of mine, actually. Um, uh, he's in jail now. Uh, but, um, <laughs> but he, he used to, he got in jail because he got caught coming over the Brooklyn bridge with ecstasy, yeah. but he had a trash bag full of ecstasy. It wasn't like a little bit. It was like a lot of bit. So he went to jail for a long time. And um, but uh, we ended up at his place. And I remember like everybody like we showed up drunk and everybody yeah. else is on ecstasy. Yeah. And then I started for some reason, I wanted everyone to play heads up seven up. And so I'm trying to explain to everybody what heads up seven up is. And, and, and the, the main drug dealer guy is a buddy of mine and, and no one wants to, but he's like, listen to him. <laughs> listen to him. He's trying to do something with you guys. 
I just remember there was a, like an after that there was one older lady who was there definitely doing drugs. Well, know. there was there was just there was a beautiful woman there that was just naked. Yeah, so there was that lady, and yeah. she would like walk in, and be like, "What's going on?" Frank said, "Go, go back to the other room." <laughs> yeah, I don't know what was going on over there. Yeah. But there and I'm so dumb. There. I'm so fucking dumb and drunk that I'm not. I'm not interested in finding out what the beautiful naked woman is doing in the other room. Yeah. I'm like, let's play heads up seven up. Pay attention to me. Yeah. There's one lady that after a bit got super interested. She was like, not the naked one. She was sitting on the couch with all these guys. And uh, I just remember after a bit, she started being like, okay, okay, okay. And like, she's all fucked up on whatever. And she's just telling me, okay. So we put our arms down. And we like, she's like, like got interested in figuring out, you know, she wanted to know the rules. Yeah, and I remember I woke up and there's a fucking ferret on my face. I had one too. Yep. Yeah, and I, I was like, yeah, ferret. fucking ferrets. And I had uh, a ferret under my pillow. <laughs> yeah. He was like, he was like, yeah, I'm a drug dealer. I got a bunch of I got fucking models walking around naked yeah. and I've got uh all these ferrets. Free range free range ferrets just caged uncaged just yeah they were like nibbling on my feet and like hanging out under my pillow i was sleeping on like a, in a sleeping bag on the ground yeah and i remember you and i had to take the bus back into manhattan and it was really depressing like because we were just like hung over and we and it's never good when you wake up in jersey and i'm from oh. jersey but yeah. like if I you start new out in new york and then you black out and then you're in Jersey. It's yeah. super depressing because you yeah, got to. It's like, what did you do? Yeah. Uh, and you got to get on the bus and it's just, it's horrible. Well, my favorite part of that was I woke up that morning and there's the ferrets and stuff. And Frank's already doing whatever drugs. I forget what drugs he was doing. Yo, what up, bro? You And it's like eight or nine in the morning. He's like, what up, bro? You hung over? I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty hung over. What do you, what do you need? Do you need some weed, bro? I'm like, nah, nah, I'm okay. He's like, what about some Coke? I'm like, no. No, he's like, well, you need some ecstasy, bro. I'm like, no, I'm like, do you know where like I can get coffee? <laughs> it's, like, it's like, I just, I'm like, a, I, I'm not a right, I'm, not, I'm just a guy. I'm not <laughs> you want to, you want to fuck a hot naked girl while yeah, ferret like, tickles your oh, balls? Man, you want to go look at a naked girl and store an ecstasy off her stomach? No, I just need a cup of coffee. And literally when we got into Manhattan, I just went to Grace Papaya. I'm like, this is what I need to fix me. Yeah. The last time I saw him. He was like, he's telling me about getting arrested. And, I, and he's like, I got to go to jail. Like he had to report to jail. And I you was do. Like, That's what's weird about going to jail is you have to go. They don't come just put you in there. Yeah. And he's like, I got to go to jail this week. And I was like, oh, for how long? He's like, like a long time. And I was like, why? And he's like, because I got caught with ecstasy. And I was like, oh, how much? He's like, like a lot. Like, and he told me like the bag. And I was like, oh, so you're going to you're in jail for, for like, Never like like more than 10 years. He's like, yeah. And that's the last I ever talked to him. I never saw him. Again. I have two friends like that. One of my best friends in high school, he got caught because he was growing a whole bunch of mushrooms up in the mountains Oops. and they found it and he had like a whole field and uh, or like, I don't know if I don't know how you grow mushrooms. It's like logs and shit, but he had a whole yeah. like operation. And so I went to court for his sentencing uh, and I was like sitting in the pews and then they gave him I forget how long, but it was like. It was years. And then he just looked at me. He turned to me and he goes like, like, uh, and I, I went like, bye. And I never talked to him again. Never saw yeah. him again. I, I've, I've had a friend like that who he like, uh, you know, he didn't get in as much trouble, but he, he had some drugs on and he stole a car or something. And so I saw him at, he was in County here. And so I waved goodbye to him. Then years later when I was living in Brooklyn, he was like, I want to meet up. I'm out and I'm, you know, I'm doing all right. I would love to meet up. I'm like, cool. And, uh, and this is everyone had cell phones by this point, but he still didn't have one. So he's like, well, just come to the street corner in Williamsburg. What a and meet drug up. dealer. No, he wasn't a drug dealer. He was just uh, like, some guy. Uh, he, he had had drugs on him, but he also like stole a car or something. So he, uh, uh, yeah. So, but he was trying to meet up with me in Brooklyn years later, but he just like kept moving around and telling me he was at different pay phones and I could never find him. It's like, all right, I'm going to go home now because now I'm in bed side. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Someone's saying that uh, in courtroom, they're not called pews, but they look like them. You know, you yeah. know, those big, long wooden uh, yeah. benches. I guess they're yeah. called. OK, benches. well, I mean, let's think about this. You go into the room and it's cold and it's made out of stone. You sit on a long wooden bench and a man in a robe tells you what you did wrong. How is that different from church? And then you get molested. <laughs> But when oh, it's Derek, short, it takes a little longer because Derek Chauvin, 
Here's some news, hot breaking news right off the presses. Derek Chauvin, uh, 22 years in prison. 22 and a half. 22 and a half. I had a guy, a customer at my insurance job this uh, afternoon. He's like, he's like, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, you know how it is around South, in South Dakota. So he's like, you know, I know he did something wrong, but man, uh, like, uh, he's going to be an old man. I'm like, yeah, that's the fucking, like, that's like. Yeah, you know who's like, not going to be an old man? The guy exactly. he killed. Yeah. Huh? The guy he killed. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's like George Floyd. He's not going to yeah. be an old man. It's like, yeah. I just don't know, like, when they're like 22 years, like, it's like, what, do you think he's looking forward to getting out? I don't know, but they said like, 22 the and a half is the actual sentence. So you know that there's the justice system so fucked. So, you know, there's some certain minimum number they're supposed to get to and that he's getting, you know what I mean? Like, and he'll probably, I mean, let's, uh, what, how much do you think he'll actually serve before he's out? I mean, a year, you know? I don't know, but I don't think I'd want to come out. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's going to be bad if, when you get out. Everyone's going to beat you up. Yeah. Like everyone hates him. Yeah. Do you think yeah. he'll get Epstein? I mean, he doesn't know anything. No, that's the thing. It's never those guys that kill themselves. Yeah. You know, he's, yeah. I don't know why he's sticking around. Like, it's like this, you fucked this up. This up, you, like, this is when you quit the game. You fucked it up. Like, you know, yeah. but yeah. he's going to stick around. Uh, it's the guys, it's the guys who, the guys who commit suicide in prison are the guys who are like, hey, I'm not going to commit suicide in prison. <laughs> like, Watch if I die. Person. The um, yeah. United States government has killed me. Those are the guys that commit suicide in prison. <laughs> that was one of my favorite memes of all time. When Epstein died, they put those memes out. When Epstein was murdered, sorry. They put all those memes out of, uh, it was the same meme, but uh, it was uh, like an old drawing of all these different knights putting their swords like at the table, like they're all meeting. And every knight was labeled like, liberals democrats antifa nazis you know like everybody agreeing like uh and in the middle it said uh epstein was murdered you know like everybody like everybody would just like oh, oh well he didn't kill himself it's what i have that i can talk to my parents about absolutely yeah they're like you know jeffrey epstein kills himself. Yeah. yeah the yeah. fucking royal yeah. family killed him yeah it's like the, it's the one thing that like you can agree with your parents on that's a great point it's like yeah yeah but they you know it's, it's healed our nation you, know, you ever notice that how our how our nation's healed now and it's fine? Yeah, <laughs> it's because of Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey uh, Epstein killed himself or uh, got murdered, so we all agreed on that and then joined hands and rushed the Capitol building. <laughs> yeah, and you know now, uh, Billy Gates, he's getting a uh, fucking uh, divorced. Yeah, uh, because because um, uh, he's been fucking around with Epstein. Oh, like no. that, that's that what he's pissed about. Because he here's the thing. So you know, like. So, uh, you know, the, uh, the super rich are all, um, uh, you know, a, a couple people. of pedophiles, you know, yeah. um, and, uh, you know, uh, allegedly and, uh, you know, so Billy Gates, he's, you know, he's friends with Epstein and everybody, you know, okay. A lot of rich people are friends with Epstein, yeah. um, you know, and, and sure, you know, Bill Clinton was on the plane, the Lolita express, I believe it was called, mm. but you know, Bill Clinton, I'm sure he didn't do anything uh untoward on the airplane uh you know um but uh but so you're like okay well they a lot he had lots of friends a lot of uh, yeah. things turns out bill gates started being friends with him after the first time he was in jail for the pedophile stuff oops yeah so it was like he was like oh hey what's up dude like you know, so that's what that's what the uh his wife is saying in the uh, yeah. divorce stuff that's like when when Frank gets out of someone's like, hey, man, I heard you can get X, you know, so now I'm going to be your friend. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. Ooh. They should throw them all, you know, Billy Gates. Well, he's never going to go to jail. You can't go to jail. But after after a certain amount of money, you can't go to jail. Well, even Martha Stewart didn't. I mean, who, by the way, Martha Stewart gamed the system, so she's fine. But uh, she went to. She doesn't have the type of money I'm talking about. Well, I know. And she didn't even go to real jail either, though, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I always go back to that, that great Chris Rock bit from years ago about uh, when, when black people are considered rich and wealthy versus when white people are and how it's just another example of the disparity, right? Mm -hmm. And he, this line is always just really, you know, really sold it for me. And it's simple. He just says, yo, if Bill Gates woke up with Oprah's money, he'd throw himself out of a fucking window. It's a great joke. It's a great joke. And it makes oh, so much sense because you think of Oprah as super rich and uh, Bill Gates th 
you know, looks at her like, that's not very much money, you know? <laughs> yeah. Jared 1694 said, I'd eat Oprah's ass. Sure. I probably would too. Um, so like, I don't know. I don't, think this, I don't think this, uh, what's his name is coming in. Who? The guy. The guy the I Mickey, invited. Mickey Nut Fuzz. What's his name? Some fan of the show. He wanted to come and talk on it. He doesn't even watch the show. Some fucking fan. <laughs> Some fucking fan. He only wants to watch when he's on, just like you and I would, you know? So. No, see, Trevor Country is committed. They're loyal. They're here every week. Mm -hmm. Look at us. We're, we're, we, we've never had one where we dip below a thousand. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yeah, you can. Uh, that's a good point. You can be a guest uh, at a, um, a, what is this? The flagship. You can get to be a guest on the flagship uh, by joining the Patreon now, how much do you have to do? How much is that? Because one of the things is super expensive. Is it the most expensive one? I think it's part of the $100 level, isn't it? Oh, my God. Sure. No, maybe it's not. I, I'm not sure it, it says it on that there. Isn't that too expensive? Don't, dude, don't ask chat that. They're just going to say yes. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I, I, so, but, wait, but we've been talking about changing some of the levels. So there might be some updates coming to Patreon. Someone know. said y'all have sold out. We have not sold out. <laughs> Dude, because we're literally funding a poopy cartoon like through people. Taking, so I know not, that sometimes it seems we're not like pocketing maybe, any of the money. It's all well, good. No, we're not at all, man. No, yeah. I mean, shit. Like, no, we, we don't pocket any of that money. Um, Timmy still but, works at the ice cream factory. I still work at the ice cream factory. Shit in my pants every day, but clock it in, clock every it in with day. like a with, fucking champ with shat pants. <laughs> Do you bring another pants pair of pants to work? Oh no! If you bring another pair of pants to work, then you get made fun of by all your friends because they're like, "Well, well, well, look at Mister Two Pants." And so they're, look, like, they're like, "Look at him! Go. He's planning it. He he knows he can't help himself. He knows he's gonna eat too much ice cream." <laughs> and then you gotta sit by yourself in the lunchroom, <laughs> shit in your pants. Hmm. Oh, it's fun. Uh, it's a lot of fun, but yeah, you know, uh, I don't even know what we're talking about. Oh yeah, Timmy, oh, the news. Hey, what else? What other news? Then what we got to get into Timmy. Uh, so Timmy's in college now. Okay, am I in New York? Yeah, you're in New York. Okay. Um, but you got to read. Let's read donos. Why don't you read donos, yes. and I'll think of a good question about your college age. So yeah, you know, yeah, because I went to college briefly before New York, but that was nothing too exciting happened there. Okay, so uh, Principal Rolls donated 10 bucks, said so glad the flagship is back. Grant donated 10. Shout out to the Mars movie lead animator, Mike. I went to animation school with him, and he's a cool dude. Awesome. Thank you, I Grant. Cool dude. The dude 3600, uh, who called you a sociopath earlier, said wasn't sure, donated another 20 bucks on top of his 50. It said wasn't trying to be mean to Trevor. I honestly assume that's how he identified, but solid interviewer. Here's money for my apology. Also, war is bad. All right. Wait, what did I say? Where, uh, what well, did earlier he we read one where he said, uh, I always thought Trevor was a sociopathic asshole. And he's uh -oh. like, I wasn't trying to be mean. I honestly assumed that's how he identified himself. You know, I get that a lot from uh, mostly from chat, not so much from uh, Trevor Country, but uh, the, the from, Newsboys people. From Newsboys Nation would also yeah. always say, I mean, these Trevor Country people are good folk. Right. Salt of the earth. Salt of the earth. Real, uh, you know, just hardworking American men and women. Grass uh, fed. Yeah. Grass fed. Uh, thick as the day is long. Um, beautiful. Hottest. The hottest fans <laughs> of any of the shows. Just smoking hot. Smoking hot. We're talking thigh gap. Uh, just like. Thigh gap. <laughs> bring thigh gap back. <laughs> Is thigh gap still cool? Thigh gap still know. cool. I don't know. I don't think so. Um, no, because now now it's cool that like it, people are becoming more accepting of thickness, so yeah. you don't need a thigh gap anymore. Pound for pound, the hottest <laughs> of the whitest kids Twitch stream uh, empire fans. I mean, look, uh, the hottest of whore town. The zucchini boys butt suckers. That's what my people are called. The butt suckers. They're pretty good too, though. What do you think? What show has the ugliest fans? I don't know what what's Sam's show called? Trailer Boys. <laughs> Watch our, our stream's gonna disappear though. Yeah, because Nate's gonna cut us off for talking shit on his show with Sam. Nate, uh, how how hot are the uh, the the Trailer Boys fans? He's not. <laughs> well, find out. Uh, I got a couple. Oh, well, you can't do that. We're gonna get banned off Twitch. Are you kidding me, man? 
All right, I, I got a couple more donations to read. Uh, WKI nine donated five bucks. Says Trevor, my daughter won't stop watching P- Walk the Prank. Help. Uh, oh, yeah, I got watch- addicted to your other show. Um, oh, you know what? Something really nice happened today. What? What's that? Paul Shear. Uh, you know Paul Shear. Yes. He did uh, on his podcast. He does a recommendation, and he stopped and he told everyone to watch my uh, Just Roll with It show. He That's said cool. he. He said he and his wife have gotten into it, and uh, and it was just very, it was very sweet of him. And he said Trevor from Whitest Kids started it and everything. And it was really nice, sweet guy. That's nice, man. Well, it's a great show. My daughter was super into it. I remember we're, we're driving home one day, like she was watching it all the time. At this point, she goes, "Hey, Dad, do you think Trevor is famous?" And I'm like, "I don't know. <laughs> is he? Sure." I'm like, "Yeah." I'm incredibly famous, Timmy. <laughs> Okay, donations. Uh, uh, Twerkin donated ten bucks. Said the new mods are pretty okay, but the classic mods, Chef's Kiss, because Twerkin is a classic mod. Uh, Aram Guard donated five bucks. Said I feel you, Timmy. I went to a Baptist school that was like that, K through twelve, all in one room, strict dress code. All the teachers are pastors. The principal sucked at math, so when kids needed help with algebra, he just tell them to stop sinning. Wow. Well, I'm sorry, Baptist, I wasn't listening. I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. What did you it was say? Was about a Baptist school being crazy? Oh. Which, you know, you hear, I mean, Baptist is one of the kind of weirder ones, isn't it? No, I was Baptist. I thought you were just like, you're Baptist? All right. No, my parents were non-denominational, but I was secretly Baptist. (laughs) Well, Baptist is always the ones like in like a show like like True Detective season one, right? When they're like investigating some weird ass religion in the South that's secretly up to no good. They're always Baptist. Yeah, but that's it's a big Southern thing, Baptist, yeah, Southern Baptist. True. So I I liked being Baptist because my grandmother was Baptist, and her church was an, a mile away from my house, and my parents' church was thirty miles away from my house. <laughs> so we had to get up so much earlier when when we would have to go to my parents' religion, and so I was always like, "Can we just be Baptists?" Can we please be Baptists? There's a church right here. Like we could, <laughs> we could literally leave at 10:55 to be at the 11 o'clock service. See, yeah, why not? I mean, you know, some of that is just convenience anyway. So just go with it. I mean, a lot of religion was invented because they didn't have science. So they're like, I don't know, it's probably a man put the sun up there. So it's a big, a big man, you know, who's in charge right. of everything. So why not just continue with the convenience? You know what Baptists uh, think? Is that, that once you've been saved, you go to heaven no matter what. No matter what you do after that. Once saved, always saved. You're good for life. So then you can do that's whatever pretty, you want. That's pretty dope. That's a good deal. It's that's like a blank check or what? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Oh, hey, the uh, the Zoom's going to run out in 10 minutes. <laughs> um, so uh, I once heard a Jehovah's Witness uh, make fun of Portland or recycling when I lived there. Now, did you like Portland? That's all right. You got it. You know, I I don't know, man. You know, that was a hazy time in my life, uh, making bad decisions. Oh, we haven't even gotten into your marriage. uh, We don't need to. I think I've talked about my marriage on so many different things, you know. But this is the the entirety of your life. Have you enjoyed being on the show? A lot of times you don't enjoy talking to me. Has this been okay? Has this been a good? I I think that's unfair because a lot of times you and I are just pissing each other off on purpose anyways. That's true. That is true. I mean, because uh, a lot of times on the Saturday show, if things are seem kind of boring, you and I will just start zinging each other, you know? Yeah. And sometimes I come in hot just because I, I feel like uh, I can come in hot. But, you know, you and I, uh, you know, back in the day when I used to get really mad, and I still do sometimes, about people making fun of me, your jokes were never the problem. I only ever got uh, mad when, I, you know what? I was never like, I was never offended by the material. I was always offended by because I felt like it was too easy and boring. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you're calling me fat again. So now when you do that, I make fun of you, you know. Right. It's been I always thought that I had a little bit of craft to it. I always you know thought what? that. That's exactly joke. what I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because I feel I feel like I, I pride myself on my writing abilities. And I, and I feel like my fat jokes had a, you know, had a little bit of a different angle. And you know what, though? And I know you're being kind of silly right now, too. But I, I honestly agree. Is like, you know, there there were times where, you know, there were moments back in the day, and I wasn't the only person who went through this, but there are moments uh, sometimes when it'd be like everybody's just making fun of one guy, and right. yours would always be better, you know? 
I really thought that, you know. Thank you. I love you, buddy. I love you too. Well, that's the thing is like you and I, we've, we've told our, told each other this through every level of sobriety you could be at, including just being sober. Uh, you know, we're always going to be good. And so I think what people we're poor boys, us, we're poor we're boys. What? We were poor boys. We're poor boys together. We're just a couple <laughs> poor boy sandwiches, but no, I mean, you know, I mean, I don't think you've ever, you know, be, I saw people in the, on Twitter asking when you asked for questions to ask me, they were like, talk about when you piss each other off. I said, I think we each have one and we've already talked about it. You know what I mean? Like we just don't like do it, you know? Yeah. I don't really get mad at a lot of people. No. And I don't really either. And I think part of the reason is because I fucking vented off in these little outbursts and then yeah, I'm you, get mad, you get mad frequently and then for it like, burns out for like 30 seconds. Yeah. 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 Which you don't, honestly, you don't hold a grudge. Yeah, is that not maybe healthier, you know? I think so. I think so. I think it was too, like my girlfriend and I were talking about that because we had some sort of disagreement and it's like, well, we never really got to the point where we were yelling at each other. It's just like, you know, she's, uh, you know, she's like, well, I'm Italian American. And I'm like, well, I'm from a big family. So we're both just fucking Italian American. Yeah. So. Did you know this when you started dating her? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Here's the thing, man. Maybe you can agree as an Irish dude, uh, you know. I feel like Italian Americans and Irish people have a similar. Are you worried she'll rob you? Well, no, but that's what people just say about Irish people too, right? Because I know. That's the thing. I, know. I kid Irish the Italians, is, huh? I kid the Italians. I my know. my philosophy is that you can make fun of all of the Axis powers for a hundred years. <laughs> so I think uh, the Germans, you can make fun of them. Right, so you got so, twenty three, yeah, twenty four years left. All right. Good math. Look at you. Um, yeah, like uh, I, I think you can make fun of Italians. I make fun. Uh, you can make fun of uh, the Germans and controversial. I think you can make fun of the Japanese. <laughs> I mean, that was a big World War Two was a big deal. Yeah, but we had the, also the internment camps, though. So that's kind of we didn't do that to the Germans and Italians. You know what I mean? If they, we would have if they were here. Well, here's the thing. So I they was saying, here, like, I feel German. like, yeah, why don't we do that to Germans and Italians? There was because German and Italian Americans. Shit, because we're racist. We're a racist country. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Maybe here's we what my are. point was about Italian and Irish people. It's like we're the two. We we seem to be the two like groups of of of, of white folks that whenever there's not other people around to harass, racists just go after Irish and Italian people as like unclean, you know, or whatever. Yeah, because uh, Irish weren't considered white. Mm-hmm. Which is weird because they're like the whitest. The, yeah, dude, look at us. We're fucking red. I'm so white, I'm red. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, it's because you can see the blood veins in my face because my skin is paper white. Yeah. Someone so, said, I look forward to Trevor explaining his racism rules on a witness stand someday. <laughs> well, don't you think those honor. are fair, fair racism rules? Look, Your Honor. Here's and it's the deal. Not, and by the way, it's not racist. No, it's, it's, it's about it's uh, against targeted, countries. It's targeted. Oh, oh, that's a good point. It's about countries. It's not I, about races. So, okay. If I'm like, a, if I've grew my whole life in Japan, that's just where my parents ended up and I lived there. You're going to make fun of me because of my affiliation with a country that was in the axis of evil. Yes, exactly. All right. Okay. You cannot make fun of Koreans. You cannot. <laughs> Make I know there's the Korean War, but that was totally our bad. That was our right. bad, right? Yeah. You, you World can War II always, was the last war that like, was fine. You know? cannot make fun of Vietnamese. That was our bad. Actually, I'll give us a pass. That was France's bad. That was totally yeah. France. Because France was like, hey, we want all of our colonies back. Everybody, like, everybody help us. Um, but, uh, yeah, you can't make – you can only make fun of the axis of evil. No, the axis of evil is, is George Bush's thing, isn't it? They were just Axis. The World War II oh. was just Axis. It was just original Axis. <laughs> not extra crispy. Um, says, I'm not sure that works, Trevor. So here's the other thing. is On these shows, uh, I don't think a lot before I talk. So yeah. I'll just say whatever comes to mind, and I'm just trying shit out to see right. if it's a good uh, idea or not. Most of the time, it's not. And then whatever. Right. Move on. I think we do that on all the things. like Because on Zucchini Boys, I'm alone, and I'll like... Someone will say something in chat and I'll yell at them and then they'll clarify it. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, because we don't come in here. Sometimes people think we're doing bits and it's like, we're not doing bits. Are you kidding not me? not writing anything. Dude, my, you can see my dirty dishes. You think As I'm Nick bits? Cannon would say, this is off the top of the dome. Who? Oh, Nick Cannon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember him? Oh, yeah, dude. Dude, me and when we had Jesse Pop on the show a few weeks ago when you guys were gone, uh, 
he and I reminisced about when I crashed in his apartment in 2012. He was uh, we watched Nick Cannon's comedy special, which is terrible. Is um, it? It is. Anyways, uh, Jesse used to write for Conan. We were talking about that. Conan's done. Was it his last show tonight? Last night I watched it. I, yeah. I was bummed out. I was bummed out. I, and here's why I was bummed out. Um, I'm a big fan of, of late night television in general. I, I, I like the format, even though the format's dying and sure. you know, it doesn't mean anything anymore. Well, what is this? It, this is late night television. Well, I think this is, I mean, I think Twitch and stuff like this interactive things is going to be like the yeah. future, but I love the old late night talk shows. It was, it was, uh, I loved it when I was growing up. Uh, I worked on the, the Jay Leno show for five years. Um, just a fan of the whole thing. Um, and, uh, the thing that bummed me out was so Letterman's send off was fantastic, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and what the NBC did was they let him use clips from his NBC years. And with this Conan one, Conan has a has a, you know, 28 year history in late night. Now, I mean, most people's best work is in comedy is their 30s and 40s and you know stuff like that so like the bulk of his amazing stuff was on nbc right. and i guess there's such animosity there that they didn't let him use anything so That's like crazy. on the look back of his career he could only use clips from the tbs years and Which it was just nine kind of, years i know it was kind of sad because you're like oh man they really fucking did him dirty with that like so, you know so what's that no masturbating bear no preparation H Larry, whatever that the guy's fucking name. lever with the Walker Texas Ranger. They like, show that. Oh, and that's the greatest. Like, see, uh, see so we have greatest. we have less than a minute left, but it's also we've been on two hours. What do you think, Timmy? Do you want to do like ten more minutes? Yeah, let's do a little bit more. Okay, we'll do a little bit more. This is a supersized must see TV. Uh, uh, I'm having a good time. I'm having a great time. It's I'm nice to finishing off my sour gummy worms. We have to get into, uh, you don't want to get into the, the ex-wife. We can talk about that a little bit. I just feel like it's been done. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to go through the whole thing. Go, no, what, about the, what about uh, the current girlfriend? Can we go into that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll skip the ex-wife um, and, yeah. we'll and we'll go into the current girlfriend. It's like a happy ending. Yeah. yeah Timmy, uh, Timmy Williams, a life told in roughly two hours and ten minutes. Uh, so let's just go. Oh, I'll oh. start a new Zoom for everybody. Okay. Why don't you say, welcome oh, to the flagship. If you're just joining us, uh, I'll do the hosting, Timmy, if you want, if you don't. I was mind. trying to get into this chat thing. Okay, go ahead. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the uh, flagship. If you're just joining us, we are entering our third hour. Um, we are, we're only going to be, this is a little bit of an extra uh, bonus. We're going to go for a couple minutes here, and then mm -hmm. we're going to join the uh, Fantastic Plastics. Yes. Um, uh, uh, our after party. Uh, so, Timmy Williams, mm -hmm. there was a whole kerfluffle. Uh, you, you married a lady. Right. That you, you met at a show. Mm hmm. Um, and, uh, you know. Produced a child. Well, we moved to Oregon, which is a dumb idea. Silver lining is mm -hmm. you had your uh, beautiful daughter, who right. is a, uh, a charming, fantastic person. Just a bunch. Um, the uh the the darker lining is uh, all the rest of it yeah <laughs> ended up back in south dakota uh broke as a joke and all that stuff have uh since then you know uh made my own uh, peanuts through uh selling insurance and radio and whatever else so occasionally doing stand-up but yeah it was funny when we were when we went to uh break our zoom uh dictated break uh we, you and I were talking about how we were going to talk about my girlfriend. I'm like, yeah, well, in and out a happy note. And I just, as we're getting out, I see someone in chat go, what about his daughter? I'm like, oh yeah, I should probably say that that's what makes me happy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and you've got daughter, a great daughter, daughter, which is great. Huh? Some people get, uh, some people get shitty daughters. You've got a great one, which is fantastic. Yeah. Well, you know what? You my know? parenting philosophy, I always wanted to have a kid and you know, I like at the time I did, I don't know, but I mean, it happened and she's great. So let's go roll with it. Uh, but um, my whole parenting philosophy is just let's not give the world another asshole. Mm -hmm. That's honestly been like my driving mantra. It's good. You know, just I just teaching her to like, you know, be chill. And, uh, you know, and you're a girl, you're a girl in this stupid fucking world. So I always tell her, like, if you need something, you got to fucking ask for it loudly. 
<laughs> never, <laughs> never been a better time to be a, uh, on the other side. Never been a better time to be a girl than right now. Well, because it's like ramping up with the, with the quality yeah. and stuff. Things sure, are better. Yeah, but there's still just so much that you're gonna have to fight against, you know. So I yeah. don't know. Um, yeah, but and she, you know, uh, kids said it's really interesting. Like when your song is getting into school stuff, it's gonna be interesting the way that kids now like kind of see things because like. When she was like five, she it was like Black History Month. I picked her up from preschool or kindergarten, whatever it was. She's like, Dad, have you ever heard about Rosa Parks? And with your kid, you always got to go like, no, tell me, you know, because I want to, mm-hmm. you know, I want to see what she says. She's like, well, she was this black lady that just tried to ride the bus. And then all these white people <laughs> were telling her what to do. And I'm like, you know what? I'm like that. You're pi- I like that you're pissed about this, you know, <laughs> like. So, yeah, but no, she, she's great. And uh it's uh you know it's just uh we have fun man we uh you know we ride our bikes we watch star wars shit we uh so wait what happened at the end of the i've never heard of rosa parks what happened at the end (laughs) they i never heard of the ending ending. i I, I did go to school in virginia so like i I, like we do we didn't we don't so the ending ending is the outcast wrote a song about her but in the middle part she got asked to go to the back of the bus just because of the color of her skin. And it's very sad, you know? So Yeah. No, I, I actually did. I actually I did. know. So um, <laughs> Not to brag. I actually knew about Reza Park. And she once told me she, yeah, she said, but little kids just have such a great, uh, I don't know, just a, a great view on things. So it's, it's just fun. Like uh, watching someone develop their worldview and uh, you know, try not to like make them a dickhead. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. so the new girlfriend yeah where did you meet so this was uh and I'm, I'm gonna back up a little bit before i met her and talk about you catfishing because you know that this all ties together I, I i am an expert catfisher yeah so trevor made an instagram girl who was like you know so he used a lot of hot black and white like modeling photos from somebody i don't know yeah. just find him online or whatever what yes so again? my my rule though is that i don't want to like take people's photos where you see their face yeah so what i do is i use one of those ai generators and i uh click on it like until i find a girl i'm like oh people will hit on her and then i use her that for the real face for like her face but then everything else i just do artistic shots where you just see like i'll steal photos of people where you don't see her face like she's like her back back. yeah back and stuff all very artsy looking yeah and she requested my I have more than one Instagram. So she requested one of my Instagrams, the private one. And uh, my girl. Yeah. 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 Cause I only had one at the time. Uh, yeah. So, and I was friends with her, Dan, Danny, Danny, something. Don't give her name out. I don't want oh. people. I don't want, uh, I, I still use her. I don't want, oh, you uh, do? I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't want so, people to like join it and then like blow up my spot. So Deborah. So it's Deborah. And uh, so this Deborah friend requests me on Instagram. Now I see, I'm like, who the fuck is this? That's my private one. Mm-hmm. Who is this? And I see that she's friends with Sam and Nate, and I think your wife. So I'm like, oh, I, 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 I made my wife unfriend her because I was like, you're you're blowing the whole thing. Well, like, no, but it helped in this case, man, because I'm very private on Instagram, right? Because I got pictures of my kid and stuff. So, but I saw this person was friends with three of my very good friends, Sam and Nate, and your wife. So I'm like, all right, well, if these people are friends with her, she must be someone I've met and just forgot about because that happens. Mm-hmm. So then I friended her, and then like. Uh, every once in a while you would comment, she would comment on a picture and like, then, you know, sometimes I like, like her comment or one time she asked a question. So I answered it and, you know, it's always just like pretty normal shit. I think I do a good job at, at, at being a girl. Yeah. You, you I'm normal. like, hello, oh, well, and I yeah. put like an emoji or like, yeah, like a lot of, yeah, there was something you said that was like little fire emojis, you know, I'll do like, yes. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, cause my daughter is only not even 10 yet. And she does the yes. Like that's just what they do. So anyways, uh, but it was always just like every, uh, my interaction with that, with, with her was always innocuous. Right. And then it kind of died off. You told me about it. We, you know, but you told me that I was never creepy to her. So I, yeah, I, so I, so I that's why I told you, I was like, Oh, he's not being creepy. I'm not gonna, that's the other rule I have with Danny is that <laughs> I never fuck with people who don't deserve it. Right. Like I'm like Dexter. So anyway, so then nine, 10 months later, we're still in the, we're deep into the pandemic. We're talking like early December. Uh, 
And at this point, we've been doing Twitch. We've been doing YouTube stuff. We've been re-uploading Midas Kid Sketches. We're doing all sorts of shit. And so I get a lot of messages. I'm sure you do too. You and I are probably the best at reading messages. Uh, uh, I'm terrible at it. Are you? Okay. Well, anyways, yeah. I do. So <laughs> I feel I'm, like I'm the horrible at leaving reading. people on read. I'm really bad oh. at it. Like, cause I'm like, and I don't mean anything. I'm just like, I read it. And then in my head, I'm like, I'll respond to that later. Yeah. And then the rest of my life goes by. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. <laughs> and it's hard because there's just a lot of expectations. Anyways, but so I, I, at this point, you know, we're talking like this past December, you get a lot of messages from people being like, uh, hey, you know, you have really improved. You guys have really improved 2020. You know, it's a nice thing to say. And it means a lot to me when people say that. Right? Wait, I said that. That's good. No, 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 no. A lot of people have been saying that. I'm talking about like this past December. I'm getting oh, okay. there. Right. Oh, this, this is, is the I, girlfriend. So getting there. Yeah. So, okay. right. so I get a, uh, I get a message from her and she says it. I'm like, Hey, thanks. I said, you know, it's a, uh, she's like, you know, it's really helped our 2020. I said, Hey, it's really, you know, it's actually doing this helps us too. Cause I don't know about you. I know she, I watch, she watches this. She knows the show. So she had heard about like us about on Twitch though. Like, so I think she knew a little bit of the sketches, you know, cause a friend of hers had shown her that whatever. But anyway, so she said that and I wrote back like what I normally do is like, Hey, thanks. And, I, I told her, I was like, I, I, I think it's good for us too. Cause I don't know about you, man, but definitely doing that shit in 2020 helped me not go crazy. You know, so I was the fine. stuff that we did, you know, huh? Yeah, I was fine. <laughs> Anyways. So I told her that. I think I, I think I could have done five years in quarantine. I kind of liked it and I miss it. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, I mean, South Dakota only did it for about 10 minutes, but anyway, so, so anyway, she says that I write back, then she starts kind of saying some other stuff back and it just, you know, it just worked, you know, people respond all the time. You're like, okay, haha, thanks. But this just, I don't know. She was like intriguing me kind of flirty stuff. And then I like took like a week to write back. And so she thought, Oh, this, okay. I scared this dude off. That's a baller move. Well, here's the thing. I'm just such a fucking dork that I was like worrying about what to say. You're like, sorry, I'm chatting with like too many girls. <laughs> I was actually asking two of my like good friends that are girls. Like, what do I say? Anyway, so so then after a week, she like hits me up again, but just with like funny stuff. And like I wrote back and then she we talked a little bit. And then she's like, if you you know, here's my number. And then we started uh, texting all the time and calling all the time and doing all that stuff. And here's it. I mean, I've done sort of long distance relationships before, but like always rush them into like, let's move together as quick as possible, which is a terrible. Always rushing? Rushing. Rushing. Oh. Never they're like I've done long distance relationships, but they've always been Russian. I'm like, oh, Timmy, no, they're yeah. not. That's Come not on, Trevor. Real. You know, you're sitting alone in your house. You're reading the back of the magazine, and then, anyways, uh, you know, I I love that uh, um, 90 day fiance show. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's fantastic. Is it a Russian mail order bride show? It's they take all these pe- <laughs> they take all these people that are like dating like people from overseas. And like, sometimes it's real, sometimes it's not, but it's fantastic. Uh, someone says, Big Ed. Yeah, my uh, my wife got me a Big Ed cameo for my birthday. Like, he's like, hey, <laughs> no, not Big Ed. Who uh, uh, who are the other? I forget their names. The couple uh, is an, an Asian lady and a, and a big fat guy, a big fat white guy. Uh, they're, they're my favorite couple on there. Uh, anyway, I got a cameo from them. Oh, that's um, cute. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, so like, so, but a lot of times there'll be like some like dumbass who's, uh, like, you know, like, well, she needs her webcams broken. Webcams are always broken. Kind of thing. That'd be hilarious if I was watching that and you were on there one day and you're like, well, Oh, my know. Russian girlfriend. <laughs> I know. Well, it's Russian. She swindled me. And that's the thing is, you know, you get in a long distance relationship, meet on the internet sort of thing. You're like, Oh man, you know, like, because there's so many stereotypes and scary things, stories. Like, there's a customer of mine who's always talked about, he's like, yeah, my girlfriend is going to get up here soon. She just needs me to send her some more money. You know, that kind of thing. It's like, oh, my God, dude. Yeah. Anyway, so she and I started talking, and then got phone numbers, and then we started talking all the time and stuff. And I texted you. You probably remember this. And I said, Trevor, do you have any other catfishing accounts? And it was before I started talking to her a lot. Because yeah. she's just like, you know, she looks so good in her profile picture. I'm like, wait, is this another Trevor fake? Right. Yeah, you call me. You're like, are you catfishing me? And I'm like, no. You're and like, then, no, I just have the one. Yeah. Um, but I don't. I, mean, I had well, multiple, that's... but that, but I wasn't cat, catfishing you um, at that time. But what was weird 
was that somebody had texted me and asked if they thought that they could catfish you. What? And I was and I was like, yeah, I don't know. He's pretty good. Like he's never fell for any of my shit. But I was like, try it. Who knows? And um, and then they wrote back and they were like, it didn't work. So so Wait, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. So that I for a moment I was worried. I was like, wait a minute, is Timmy dating this other person's catfish? Right. Yeah. But no, I mean the thing is, is like, no, just 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 the way it went, it was pretty clear pretty quickly that it, uh, it was uh, not fake. But here's the other thing with being in a long distance relationship nowadays, especially during the quarantine, because a she's like, is this weird? I'm like, look, if you were in town, I wouldn't even want you to come over. You know, there was fucking a disease. It's killing everybody. You know. Oh right, 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 right. So. uh you know, and so we just spent a lot of time getting to know each other. And then there's like video chat and there's, I mean, it's like, you can, you know, you can like, just look at them on your phone now. It makes it a lot easier. And uh, the, you just look at them on your phone now. Well, I mean, the, I mean, you can look thing. at each other at the same time. <laughs> FaceTime. You know, this is the creepiest. You could just go to their, you could just go to their town and just hang out in bathrooms until they walk in and just look at them. You don't need to even be in the same city anymore. You can just look at them on your phone. That is totally need. what it sounded like. All you need. <laughs> you just look at your phone. Well, yeah, but uh, got pictures on the phone now, and you can just look at them. And you can see all of them. Any part that they see. send you, you can just. Look. <laughs> you can sit. You can sit in the corner of the basement, and you don't need Spice Girls no more because you got whatever parts they sent on your phone. I broke my salt and pepper CD in half. <laughs> I mean, I've never, uh, you know, like uh, I don't know. It's it, but but it's good and. Um, you know, uh, taking things at a good pace, which I've never done before. Everything in my life, like I said, I've rushed it, rushed it. Yeah, you were always, you were like, uh, I got a girlfriend. And we're like, oh, what's she like? And you're like, we're getting married. <laughs> exactly. That's how it was all the time. I just remember, you know, uh, a while after I got divorced, I had another girlfriend that I, she moved in with me pretty quickly. And I remember telling Zach that he's like, Timmy. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't know what to do. But no, well, also, it. Zach, Darren, and I, uh, I dated my wife for seven years yeah. before we got married. Yeah. Like, and, and Darren also, like, Similar. five years. Yeah. You know, so I do remember, like, when you were getting married, we were kind of always being like, you know, you could date for a little bit. Yeah. Oh, dude, you it know. was just, well, you know, and there was pressure and there was, uh, there was so much dumb stuff happening. So this is just like. And, you know, uh, like I said, long distance relationships are a lot different than they used to be. And so it's a easier that way. And I feel like it's just so healthy in so many ways that I know I'm not used to. So it's great. You know, it's like, oh, you can like uh, sometimes when you're with somebody, if they're like, cool, you can like, uh, you know, just uh, like tell them what you think. And they'll be like, all right. <laughs> Wait a minute. So if she if she knows about all this whitest kid shit, is she watching right now? Um, I can tell you. You know what I, I felt so. bad about? She's what? not watching. I'm not right now. What? That's pretty cool. No, she's she's cool, man. She'll watch sometimes. She won't. I mean, whatever. My, my wife she, hates all my shit too. <laughs> no, she's like she's like all right, but I mean, also that's another thing we got have in common is she is a single parent, but her kid's little. You know, like two or three. So you, I mean, you're fucking tired at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Those little fuckers wear you out. My daughter like puts herself to bed. You know, she doesn't want to talk to me. So yeah. She's like, that's funny. When we, were, when we were taping Bucker and Myers, uh, she came in and she was like, I'm putting myself to bed. And we were talking about blowjobs or something. And you were like, oh, rah, rah, rah. Yeah, like, yeah, I was like, uh, what did I say? We are so oh, Darren started talking about something reaching because his character is a woman. He started talking about reaching into his shirt or something. And oh, I was yeah. like, I was like, hold on, go back in there for a second. <laughs> Someone says, if Trevor has kids, those are going to be some monsters. I do have a kid, and he's fantastic. Did they mean although, monsters although like he physically, is, he, though? Because he's like nine feet tall. He's huge. He's exact, like, personality-wise, though, and everything, he's exactly like me. Like, my my wife is like, oh, my God. Like, you know, like, it's, she's like, like, there's like two of us now, and she's outnumbered. So it's like. Yeah. You know. Oh, dude. And okay, we're like so bros. We're like, he's like, this would be cool. And I'm like, that would be cool. Like fist bump. That's exactly like, what's happening here is like my daughter and I are just like, okay, so this new uh, Star Wars cartoon, Bad Batch, there's a character on it. You know, it takes place shortly after the Clone Wars, right? So there's a character on it. Margaret, my daughter goes, that's the same girl from The Mandalorian, only this is a younger version. I'm like, are you sure? And then I go there, I'm like, all right. 
like that was her first and i'm sure there'll be many more her first over nerding dad you know and like it's only going to happen more that Asia, the uh, that asian bounty hunter lady from the mandalorian is a younger character on bad batch she'd figure that out i didn't know so mm. anyways but yeah you know your kid becomes you and i mean you know that's what happens about you know, time someone we... did huh about time someone did <laughs> hey allegra was asking uh and i agree we should maybe answer some of these questions you ask people to ask on twitter okay. and then we gotta go we gotta go it's getting late it's getting late. I got to be at the radio station like seven hours. So. Oh, yeah. If you uh, if you live in South Dakota. You know, it's, uh, you can. All right. You go can for it. go and listen to Timmy on the radio. But it's not like a show. It's not like this. I like just throw the songs. I do some local uh, ad kind of stuff, you know, promotions. We have it's a fishing show. It's called the Timmy Williams Show on South Dakota's radio station. That's all you have to do. Just Google that. <laughs> I, I listened to it once. Did you? What was I doing? Because there's an online thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I you told were just you guys about it once. You were just was... talking about how much you hated critical race theory. I thought it was, <laughs> I thought it was, I was like, I don't know, a little off putting. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, CRT, no thank you. Uh... But see, how fast was that, Timmy? Wasn't that great? What? How quick I said that. I'm just patting myself on the back. Oh, you mean like making a joke about me and how quick and pithy it was? Yeah, dude. That's what we. That's what I do on this show is I pat myself on the back all the time. It's fantastic. Just on this show. Yeah, welcome um, to Trevor Country. Um, what about these questions? There's some good ones. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking. Um, hold on. See, now I've gotten so used to Nate doing it now that I'm just like, I've, I feel like I've lost any any little thing that I learned over Isn't the last. just looking at Twitter? Oh, you want to share the screen now? Yeah, how about you go to Twitter? I'm at it. You want me to share the screen? You got to share. You, you got to Why don't you, me. you You go through the, you know, I don't want to share the screen. I just want, uh, I want you to tell me the questions okay. and, and then I'll, I'll, I'll pick which one is a good one for you to answer. How about that? All right. We got a few good ones. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. What does Trevor mean to you, really? Uh, well, here's one about Star Trek. That's not going to work for us. Uh, ask him. Here's someone who just forgets which members we are. Ask him why he got hard that one time when you held his genitals. Because so I think he thinks you're Darren. That wasn't me. I never. I never held Timmy's genitals. Right. Um, Stroking seen, isn't holding. I've seen them. I've seen them. Uh, but just for a moment, because I ran out of the room. Yeah. Um. If the ship, at, here's what someone says. Question: I, I asked Timmy. I think I've seen yours and Sam Brown's genitals. That's all I got too. I don't think I've seen yours or Zach's yeah. or Darren's. Yeah. And there was a period where I didn't see mine. Now, did you really get so fat that you couldn't see your dick? I think when I was at my fattest in 2017, 18, probably. Yeah, I think so. Like I like, couldn't. I think I'd have to go like this. Bent down. Okay, you could still see it if you tried, but just not from standing. Did you mute? Oh, sorry. Yeah, even yeah. if it was like straight out and hard, I still couldn't, you know. Wow. Yeah, I, got, I was fat. Yeah, you were a big fat guy. And <laughs> and, 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 th and hats off to you for uh, for losing all the weight. I'm trying again, but I had a real bad eating week. But I'm. You're trying to be fat again? No, I'm trying to lose a little bit more again because oh, I went okay. up. Anyways, uh, someone says, the question I'd ask Timmy, if the ship goes down and this whole song of Dance with Call White Kids comes to a screeching halt due to the unfortunate non-timely death of Sam Brown. Okay, I don't know. Anyways, I don't know. That question's too crazy. Okay, here's one. Long. If they if they made a Magnum P.I. movie, who would you be? I don't really eh, know the skip characters. Skip it. Skip it. What's the next one? I'm sorry. Has there been a sketch Timmy wrote by himself that's made in the show or any live shows? Yeah, the, yes. the time travel sketch. The well, time, well, time wait, travel. The, uh, the Timmy the one. one. You, sit on, uh, you sit on light bulbs or something, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which... Uh, that was my big joke in that. Um, yeah, it was a quick, weird little sketch. I believe it was the last sketch showed in the last season, or in the last episode of the last season, right before we showed the last part of Civil War. Mm -hmm. Someone says, if Timmy pursued acting, what kind of roles would he want? That's a good question. Answer yeah, that I one. I mean, when I did, you know, I did a, we were all at the time when the show got on TV, we were all doing uh, auditions and stuff. And I would just always, you know, I, my heart just wasn't in it for auditions. And my auditions were either of two kinds. 
there'd be the kind where you go in and read for some role in like a new Eddie Murphy movie. And there are other people you're reading against are Judah Friedlander, Mike Birbigley and Louis CK. That literally happened to me. I'm like, okay, I'm not getting this. So there was those kind of parts. Or there's a part like, here's a fat man fucking on a mattress from a for an American Pie straight to video sequel. Oh, you would kill that. I, and I read for it and it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Oh. But so, so you know, I, I don't know. A lot of that process turned me off of wanting to act. But when they started, you know, I got into horror and stuff about five, ten years ago. And when they started talking about that stand show that's now been come and gone last year. But uh, I really wanted to play the the shitty like uh, gaslighting, masturbating, weird dude Harold from The Stand. I was like, man, I bet I could fucking kill that So role. you want to do like dramas? Well, just like a fucked up horror role would be fun. Because like, that's what that guy was. Yeah. Like he, he kind of turns evil and he's you like- You should ask uh, Zach, uh, if anyone doesn't know, Zachary Kreger. He's making a horror movie. Yeah. He's making a horror movie right now as we speak yeah. in uh, Bulgaria. Right. Uh, well, um, that, that His film doesn't have a- a Timmy role in it per se, but maybe his next one, you know, you know, cause did you read a script? Hit him up. Yeah. Um, I, I, uh, uh, I do want to, and actually, you know, my girlfriend's a horror person too. And like with all this free time you have lately, we've just been like, well now, you know, now it's kind of ramping up again, everything, but anyways, for a while we are like, we should write a horror movie, you know? And I don't know, but it's just be fun. I just want to write something where a bunch of people get killed, you know? Really? Okay, I hate kill a lot of people. I don't like them. You don't like horror movies? No, I don't like them. What don't you like about horror movies? I don't think they work on me. Yeah. Yeah. You want them like, to get scared? Well, I, I I don't I don't understand why people get scared at at like actors. You yeah, know. Well, you know, I, I think a well. I mean, I, I get when like when it's like loud all of a sudden yeah, and it's like oh sure. yeah you know. But like, uh, you know, I, I think there's uh, the ones that are well done. It's like, you know, you get creeped out by the by the mood or sometimes like the uh, if the characters are well done enough and then a character makes a decision that's really awful, that can be terrifying. Like, you know, that hereditary guy is good at that, you know, although I will say I like Zach's movie. Yeah. Did, did you read the script? No. Oh, OK. But I like it. I'm excited. I've read the script and I'm excited. So. Oh yeah, I've heard it. it's great. I've heard it's yeah, great. It's cool, man. It's uh, it's nice and simple and fucking weird, and I'm excited yeah. to see it. So I think he's gonna kill it. Yeah, I think so, man. I, well, you know, uh, that's what the world's been finding out is that uh, comedians and horror kind of go well together. So you know, uh, yeah. Ditch. What middle ditch? What are you talking? <laughs> No, like Jordan Peele or like that I guy know, from The Office that made the I alien know. ones. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, the the guy. Um, quiet, a quiet place. Yeah, everyone would be quiet. <laughs> everyone would be quiet. I saw that during a blizzard here, so it was so fucking quiet. You know, because a blizzard, when you have enough snow, even even if you're inside, you can just feel like the blanket of silence over everything. When you get like a foot of snow in a day, two feet, yeah. you know. And that's good because in the movie, well, if you're not quiet, like a, a monster man will get you, right? Yeah, it's yeah. aliens. They're like these oh, big aliens? fucked up alien guys. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, someone says read the donation. Should we do that and then leave? What do you want to do? Well, we we got to find a good question. Keep going through questions. Oh, God. See, by the way, another life thing we didn't talk about is you and I had a drunk conversation once about four years ago when I'm like, maybe I have ADHD. And that turned out to be true. And here we are. And I'm just like doing nine things at once uh yeah i probably i have something going i have something wrong mm -hmm. oh here's here's one saying how many hot dogs per day do i eat there's a clever clever one um <laughs> uh what city has the worst live crowds to perform in front of um well what do you think i don't know worst city yeah you'd say you don't you never liked performing in philly right no i i actually love i i do not care for the city um, but I actually, one of my favorite venues to play was the Trocadero yeah, and, it, and, it has, and it's nothing to do with the people. Like I like the people of Philadelphia, right? I don't like the actual city. Yeah, um, I get it. and, uh, and, and cause like the, the Philly crowd is always fantastic. And the Troc was one of my favorite, uh, places in the country to play. Um, but I, I do not like the actual brick and mortar city of Philadelphia. Yeah, I don't like the way it's uh it's set up there, you know? I don't know. Uh 
Here, this person says, hey, Timmy, would you rather have everyone in your life think you fucked a goat but not actually fuck a goat or fuck a goat but nobody finds out? Um, ooh, that's a good one. You know, uh, first of all, I, I don't want to fuck a goat. So I think I'd rather people thought I fucked a goat. Well, that's the thing. That's what I was thinking because here's the deal, right? Okay, so let's say – you're a person in my life, so you're involved in this question, right? So let's say you you hear that I fucked a goat. I'd be like, that's hilarious. Right. Now, now you might ask me about it just because, the you know, you and I are close buds and we like to be funny, right? But, like, a lot of the other people in my life might hear that but just never fucking bring it up. And so, like, maybe it just would be fine for the most part. I just don't think I actually care what people – if people yeah. thought that I fucked a goat. Because well, that's like, the thing. It's like – I'm not – I'm also at a point in my life where it's not like I'm trying to hang out with that many people. I'm not trying well, to hang right. out with people. Like I, I'm, I'm trying to hang out with the people that I like hanging out with. And then that circle, I just want to whittle it down. So it's smaller. Like yeah, I, I want from here on in, I want my life to get smaller. You know? Right. No, I agree with you. Like, I'm not trying to like be popular anymore. But the thing is, is when I see about everyone in your life, I think about people who are important to me. Like, I don't want my, like, so now you're talking like my kid thinking it, my mom, my girlfriend, you know, like now are those people who I care if they think that I, am I going to care that they think I fucked a goat? Probably, you know, I don't care if like you do. I don't care if like chat right. does. Chat believes a bunch of stuff about us that isn't true anyways, you know? So <laughs> well, I think you, I think you would really separate the wheat from the chaff. I think you would yeah. find out who's going to stick with you, even if you're a goat fucker. You know, like, so that at the very top of this, we were talking about my number of siblings here. We we're talking about if anybody would drift away, that's how you find out. You tell exactly. them all like Timmy fucks a goat. You see who sticks around. Yeah. What's more important to me is, uh, is, is my own opinion of myself. Yeah. Um, and cause that's, that's who, uh, talks to me all the time. That's, right. that's who I'm stuck with 24 yeah. seven. So, so if you know, if I know that I didn't fuck a goat, I'd be fine, you exactly. know, but if, but if I knew I did fuck a goat, yeah, that, no, you know that what? I wouldn't right. be fine. Yeah. And you know what? I can't take a secret to the grave. I'd end up telling somebody and it would be crazy. You know, uh, the zoom says, I can't believe we did a whole nother zoom, but we've got nine minutes left. And I think I'm just going to let the clock run out on this one. And that'll be oh, it. Man. That'll be the show. Here's the thing, man, is I think we've been, me and you is a, a, a Twitch configuration that hasn't happened yet. And I think it should have, you know, so I'm glad that it did. Well, I'm a lone wolf. Right. Me too. I, I, I don't, I don't. <laughs> I, don't. Uh, I have two alone streams, you know? Yeah, that's true. Um, well, you should, you should, you come on again. Let me know, man. Come on next week. You want to come on next week? Yeah. Yeah, sure. What are we doing? Uh, I believe we have James Adomian. Oh. Uh, um, but, uh, yeah, you can come on. Um, now, uh, so what else? What other questions do we have? Good thing. Someone says, good thing Timmy's girlfriend wasn't here for the goat convo. You know what? Here's how you know you're in a good relationship. She probably would have just, like, said something silly about it. You know? She Dude, if, she, if she has a problem that you fuck goats, you fucking dodged a bullet, bro. <laughs> you fucking dodged a bullet. You know what I felt bad about? What? By the way, um, so uh, Timmy's got a new girlfriend mm -hmm. and uh, everybody's talking. It's mm -hmm. like the talk of the town. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we all did a birthday Zoom for – who was it? It was my birthday. Oh, it was you? <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea that you would think we'd bring her out for some other guy's birthday Zoom. <laughs> So, so, so Amy makes me do a birthday zoom <laughs> and it's your birthday and it's all of your, it's all of the friends. Dude, you from talk about a, this is your life thing. That's what that was. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, and she's there <laughs> and no one talks to her. Well, that's the though. entire time we're yeah, on for like two hours and she's just kind of sitting there yeah. and then after and, and i didn't i didn't even realize it was fucked up till afterwards i'm going to bed i'm like wait a minute nobody fucking talked to the new kid right but you know and and, and she uh she actually didn't think that at all she was fine um because mm -hmm. here's the thing man okay that's why a zoom birthday party is weird because 
in a normal okay if all those people in re- regular life we we're all in the same town all those people would have been in a room for someone's birthday right because it was mm-hmm. a lot of our close friends and so like my girlfriend would have been like chatting up with heather or ivan or whoever you know like our buddies but the way a zoom thing is you can really only have one or two people talking at once and you and me and sam were all there and had just come off the stream so we were hot and so it was like me, you, I, Sam, and I've been kind of doing a lot of joking. And like, there was a little bit of other conversations, but it's hard to have more than one thing going on at once. Yeah, know? I remember I was being very funny. <laughs> me too, no. But like, but I asked her later, I'm like, was that weird? She's like, no, it was cool to just kind of see, you know, she just said it was cool to see you and your people. And I said, yeah, here's the thing. I, I said, there's you. This is why I told her, I said that you were on there. And then the, the person, the next person who I know the next least amount of time, was Mike, who I've known for 13 years, you know, <laughs> so yeah. it's like Mike Scollins, you know, so yeah, it was just fun seeing everybody. And so we kind of forgot about the oh. the new person. Oh, no, but she was fine. Like, she got it. You know, she she yeah. she kind of liked kind of being a fly in the wall, just meeting everybody. And, you know, it was really cool that Sam, Sam like asked about inviting her. I'm like, yeah, she'd love that because like she's just chill and she's down and someday we'll get to meet in the flesh again. You know, maybe you not. I. This Delta variant looks bad. No, oh, are we going to die again? No, I think we're fine. <sighs> someone think, huh go ahead um i'm so, wait what were we going to talk before we were we were on something before i interrupted we we're answering it. questions oh yeah let's keep going through the questions and we got five minutes left this thing ends in five minutes i should say to trevor country uh thank you guys it's good to be back i missed you over the last two weeks um timmy i guess you're gonna come back next week right uh, sure man okay talk to uh talk to james sure uh, someone says, no, thank you. That's exactly the attitude I, I like. That's what we're here. looking for. I also yeah, saw, um, this isn't a question, but I was looking at my, my notifications on Twitter. Earlier today, you uh, promoted the show by saying, on Return of the Flagship tonight, I have an interview a man I've known for decades but still don't have his number on my phone. Timmy is a nerd. Funny joke, right? We always talk about that. Somebody responded to you. We get you are an asshole. Find new ways to express it. <laughs> I don't think I am an asshole. I don't I, think I, you're I, an asshole either. I get it a lot, though. I get it a lot. You're not uh, an asshole. You know what it is? What? I think uh, you and I are uh, at heart entertainers. Mm-hmm. And we like to keep the uh, things going. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and also, I think a lot of people are um, fucking idiots. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's true, man. There's a lot of a lot of dummies. No, it's uh, yeah. It's like uh, when you're on, you, you know, it's it's fun to be on, and it's fun to like when you see, especially when we do we do all this stuff without a wire. We don't write anything, so you know, when you see an opportunity for a zing, you just zing. You know. Sutton says, "Trevor, you look like an asshole." I can't help that. Um, yeah, whatever. I mean, yeah. Oh, Allegra uh, had a good question on here, and I see this. She says, if you could play a character, this is uh, to me. She says, if you could play a character that one of the other guys played in a sketch, which character would it be and why? And then she asks a second question, which is easier. So I'll start with that. But she says, also, would you rather be aboard the Enterprise or Millennium Falcon? I mean. Star Trek sucks. I mean, yeah, Star Trek has its things. But, I mean, the Millennium Falcon, are you kidding me? Star Trek I want sucks. Harrison Ford like in his fucking sexual prime to push me into a, a little duct in the floor and hide me, you know? My uncle tried to get me into Star Trek. He was like, you like Star Wars, you like Star Trek. And he gave me these fucking movies. They were the most boring things I've ever seen in my life. It's like the, the Star Wars, Star Trek, the, the jo- what they're trying to do is make peace. Fucking boring. <laughs> I you know, like that that's your reason for not liking it. Yeah, Star Wars is not trying to make peace. Right off the bat, they're like, we're it's fucking blowing them up. It's in the, up, it's in the goddamn title. We're going to kill whole planets. Everyone's going to die. This is like, yeah. this is like, you know, existential like stuff. Uh, but okay, let's, let's get another question. I, okay. I, don't know, the, the, I don't have a character that I would like to play that someone else played. Yeah, because a lot of times we kind of played things that were to our strengths. Although one time I played Darren's slow jerk guy on a stage sketch on stage. Like he was gone or something. We did it. And I enjoyed doing that. That's about it. Um, someone beans, says, Timmy, I'm Timmy, sad you- now. It's probably because I was making fun of Star Trek. Well, I would uh, say, Beans, uh, don't worry about it. It's not really a big deal. 
Uh, you can still like it. I'm sure everything is subjective. I'm sure it's a great show. If it means something oh. to you, it means something to you. I just don't like it. Who cares? Beansy, it's fine. Yeah. Beansy's a good one. Uh, someone says, Timmy, Timmy, where do babies come from? They come from choices. All right. What uh, other questions you got? I don't know. Uh, is there a, a, a Trevor, are you going to be the new Conan? No, you got to work every day. Yeah, are you kidding me? That's the guys. I mean, that's why they, you know, they, oof. Uh, there's that. Someone says, Have you guys ever kissed? You and I have never kissed. No. I kissed Sam and I kissed Darren for the show. Really? Sam and I kissed once. No. We were drunk. It was funny. Uh, Lizzie, uh, does your hat have a tag on it? It does. <laughs> I leave it on. That way I can take it back if I want to. Okay, one more question. There's a lot of weird ones. Would you rather spend your life in poverty or hear their screams from your mansion every night? Okay, hold on. Let's choose the mansion and then let and then let's choose to spend some of that mansion money on soundproofing. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely choose the mansion uh, because also I I used to live under the Long Island Expressway. Like you, yeah. it becomes background noise after a while. Like yeah. you know, like you the trains would always go across and like you know you, you know you won't notice the screams. That's an e that's an easy question. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, there weren't a time. There's a you know there are some other questions about the hot dog thing. Uh, just the funny thing. Uh, there's oh, one about. Less than a minute. This is it. This is the end. One more. No, it's less than a minute. Okay, so well, hey Trevor, uh, this has actually Nate, been really great. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's mm -hmm. been fun. Yeah, uh, so we'll good. see you next week. And All by right, the way, uh, Nate, can you raid Fantastic Plastics once we let us die? Let us be talking, and then it, it, it cut us off mid-sentence, but then will you raid Fantastic Plastics? And, by the way, round of applause for Nate Brown. Yes, dude. Uh, this has been the smoothest uh, flagship ever, even though we had to restart it four times. <laughs> yeah, but that's just because we're cheap, not because we're inept. I didn't